Greetings, family. Welcome to Pan-Africanism Towards Nationhood, Building a Global Black Business Pipeline. Family, you are with the two good strong brothers, the kings of Pan-Africanism Towards Nationhood, Bomani Tamba and Kala Genesis. And tonight, family, we always got another dynamic topic for you. And today's topic is, does Africa need technological industrialization or traditional rural life preservations, or both. And uh, this is the Africanistan analysis, so we're going to get right into it. Our brother, Carla Genesis, uh, you, uh, let me know if you want to reword uh, the title or break no, it down. No, I think it's perfect, the title. Or something it's, simple. The title simple. The reason why I did this is because I sent you a video where a, a sister, you know, a Ghanaian sister, grew up in the United States and everything, grew back to Ghana, and she basically is saying all these people coming from the diaspora trying to develop and change things and whatnot. Right. You know, the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. You know, people don't realize how, how do we get on the slave ships? How is it that uh, these Chinese and Asian kids are uh, doing all kinds of advanced technology and everything, like ruling the world, becoming billionaires? Chinese, Asia is producing billionaires every day. And Africa is sinking into backwardness and everything and superstition and witchcraft and voodoo and all this kind of nonsense and everything, you know? And well, so, this, the thing of it is, we got people glorifying it. Like the sister, I did listen to her. I don't want to even play that video. I just wanted to. Even, I just wanted to right. get. Ready to start. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. You're right. coming from an industrialization nation, you know, where where people have used those movements to create, you know, economic opportunities. You know, you know, are you going to really just employ all them children we have in Africa without industrialization, without technology? Without uh, expanding beyond just the traditional uh, rural areas, you know, we, you know, and the, the thing I'm telling people, you know, I've been to Japan, Korea, yeah, Singapore, Malaysia, and I tell people, I mean, are you supposed to just like have the world like that exists and you just there in your, you know, like a Mara, you know, with his two little huts? <laughs> it's just the tribe of it. I didn't think you're doing something, and it's no disrespect to people at all. It's like if we don't become um, innovative and evolve to where we can, uh, you know, take things to another level, what's the point? I give you, I give people two uh, great examples, two of my favorite countries in the world, Egypt and uh, Ethiopia. These are two of the most historic countries uh, based on those historical records. And then when you do these tours, it's like history, history, like ancient history. But at the same time, too. When you go to Ethiopia, you're just not in an ancient world. You know, Addis Ababa is just a modern world. Even when you go to the southern part of uh, Ethiopia, they're building new cities. You go to Egypt, new cities in the desert. Um, and parts of the parts of the country are going to be more advanced than anything else. Yes, they do have an historical part of the, the, the country around, around the actual country. But at the same time, too, they're focused on modernization industrialization and really just building a future for their children they know they have young population so they have to literally think about the future of the you know of their of their country of the future of africa so those are two examples of two nations and but i'm always some people that you always have a you know an idiot in every village you know village idiot so you can't let village idiots define where the future of your people go because they're gonna be on some stuff you know they're gonna see space uh Craft, they're gonna see planes landing and, and these kind of movements, and it's gonna just fear them, and they're just gonna think that it's some kind of witchcraft or some crazy stuff. But it's like it's you're dealing with a competitive world, so it's like you don't represent what we're looking to build. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to live that life, stay in that life. But at the same time, too, some parts of a country can be the way it is, it's circling. But other, but you have to be innovative. And if you don't do those things, the next thing you know, you have foreigners and other people. They're gonna make those moves. The next thing you know. You, you only thing you're going to be able to contribute is the fact that they need people called modern day slaves and you're going to be the one that have to work for them and things like that because now you're going to be living in a world where things are things cost more than just some some rocks and a, and a grain of sand mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a economic base that's being built and then you're just going to be left out of the future so i tell people be careful of these things you can you know you can you don't have to make your country, or we don't have to make different countries look like some kind of space world, you know? Uh, but at the same time, too, when you're talking about this competing, we're not in a position to really compete. You know, when you're talking about the education that our children are receiving, 
in this very high advanced uh, world, can some of our children compete with, you know, you're talking about like a nation like Korea, they went from, you know, in a short few decades, they, they in a short few decades, they went from this, you know, one of the, the poor, poorest struggling nation to <coughs> a, you know, a nation that's a force to reckon with, uh, you know, their children, what is the mindset of their children? The same thing we talk about. I'm not always comparing about Asia because sometimes people made us look at us as like, why are we why are we comparing this? We're comparing this because we we're saying, hey, other nations are people which we have to compare ourselves. When we talk about Garvey, talking about Africa for the Africans, you know, that's what Garvey's talking about. Competing the same way that other nations who are oppressed are competing and you know make make a big difference. So uh that lady was interesting though. Um, you know, in, in, interested and it's like so we're just supposed to live in this little piece of the rural little environment. And then next thing you know, you have a big military ship come. And next thing you know, they just take over the whole. We haven't whole learned. Street. We haven't learned. We, at 500 years, we haven't learned a damn thing. <laughs> you know, you know, while the rest of the world was developing cannons and ships and stuff, ships that could sail around the world, ships that could ride up to your coast and snatch 100 people, you know, and yeah, export, uh, import, export, whatnot. We were just sitting there like, you know. The world is a nice place, and until you get snatched on that slave ship, you're like, damn! Remember Dave Chappelle? That Dave Chappelle skit? He go, damn, I yeah. fucked up. Remember that? He go, oh, yeah, absolutely. He goes, there's some white folks over there. What are they doing? Let me go see what they want. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing you know, he's on a slave ship. Damn, I fucked up. <laughs> there you go, man. And 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 the reality of it is like, we've seen this happen before, and you know what I mean. And that was our that was our learning lesson that you know that you know. We may be in a certain mindset, but other nations ain't trying to hear that. We're living in Africa, peaceful. So we have everything we need, but Europe is starving. Yeah, what do you think's gonna happen? You know, we think we're gonna happen. You know, and I mean, I, you know, it's like none of us could predict th th these things that happen. But it's like now that we know what happened, it's like we're looking well, let at. Me give you, let me give you another example, right? There's still Africans on the coast of Africa still using the 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 the, the, the fishing methods of their ancestors, right? And you know what the Chinese and all these other people did? In Liberia, just two weeks ago, they busted a whole bunch of uh, illegal fishing vessels off the coast. The Liberian Coast Guard is no joke. But the Coast Guard only got small boats, right? But they, they can catch people inland. But people out to sea, there's this uh, not non for profit organization that polices the waters around West Africa, busting people. But still, you can't catch everybody, you know, illegal fishing. And so what I'm saying to myself is why and also what happens is that people Vietnam and all these other Malaysia, China, they're taking African fish because Africans didn't get into the modern fishing industry, you know. And how so about a modern coast coast guard? Huh? <laughs> how about a modern coast guard? How you know, about a but, modern navy? Yeah, modern navy. Let's upgrade that shit, you know. The coast guard, your coast is what you're supposed to protect. You believe you got a nation state, you guard your borders, your nation, your 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 that's up. You, your borders, your territorial waters. Nobody. In fact, that they can come in and take Africa's fish like they've taken candy from a baby. It's sad, man. You know. Yeah, you see, you, you know? see, what, you see what protect. You see what's around the, the United States, right? Yeah, the Coast you Guard. Know? Beyond us, the Coast Guard. A whole lot of naval uh, naval vessels, naval fleets on um, the Pacific and the Atlantic, and then you have you know you have units ready to roll. So you got, uh, and naval fleets go all the <laughs> way down to Antarctica. <laughs> You know, so and, uh, people be asking, like, why they have all them ships out there? Why are they doing this? You know, hey, the, Yo, I it's about out, protecting man. the investment and protecting all the stuff that they installed. Checks and, out and, in the year two thousand. All the people they didn't dominate it. Huh? Out, year two thousand three. I was doing armed security down in Portsmouth, right? And uh, and I used to sit in the morning time when the sun comes up, and I try to catch a little nap, whatever. But I used to sit where the ships are, the the, the, the battleships are, right? Uh, right there on the harbor, right? And I looked at the size of those battleships, right? And those cannons, right? <laughs> I said to myself back then, now 2003, I said, look, this is a serious world. Whoever designed that shit, right, means business. They, they, you know? They, I said, you, 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 when you're on those naval ships, you'll see those guns, that sit, that, the, cat, the guns sitting up thing. I said, that thing, could, th those are earth-moving, nation-killing machines. Those things can sell to a coastline and devastate a city. You know, and destroy a city. You know, they That's mean business. People. They mean business, and you know, you see, you see, you see how you see how hard they fought to, you know, from the, the 30, 30, uh, 30 uh, demonic colonies to fifty something wicked states. Yeah, and they, 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 the bottom line, they don't care. You know, whether whether we 
agree or you know agree with you know how they went about things. They they're looking at it one one way. You now we we mean business and we're gonna protect our investment and we're gonna fight for the future of our children and we wanna be on top and we wanna run things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um that, that's the level of the thing out there, thing. man. And if it's we're gonna be on some, oh, I just want to live in my little hut, and I wanted this. Uh, here's be my a, here's piece, the you know? problem with the black man, right? When you when you sum up all these people, Hebrews, you're like Nation of Islam, and everything, they'll get up and they'll pre, oh man, the white man, the white man, the white man, and this, that, and the other thing, right? This is what the problem was: the black man was asleep for hundreds of years, right? You don't wake up, and even Marcus Garvey, you don't wake up in the 20th century and be like, yo, man, the world, yeah, dude, they got where they are because. Hundreds of years ago, we didn't see it coming, and so therefore, you can't look walk up in the 20th century and be like, Yeah, man, the black man, it doesn't work like that. We have to reprogram ourselves. Hey, now we said, Now we look at it now, right? In 2022, and we say, You know, something damn, we fucked up. We have to build an Africa stand, we have to build our own infrastructure, we have to build our own military, we have to build Africa to protect ourselves, or Africa won't be for the Africans, it'll be for everybody but the Africans. Right now, you got millions of non africans flooding into the continent. Why are they flooding the Because they're doing all the stuff that we say we don't need here. We don't need development. You know, yes, you do need development. You know, yes, you do need all stuff. It's what the fact of the matter is, uh, when you talk like that, you saying, okay, you're giving people an excuse to be lazy and, and, and sit back and do nothing. And so therefore, while uh, uh, you outsource it to everybody else, and what happens is now you got to share your country with Indians, Lebanese, and everybody else and so uh this is what the problem is and so uh it's like we understand that right that, like you said earlier about the village idiot running things but the village idiot got youtube channels now you know the village idiots are in africa you know spouting off popping up in the mouth talking a bunch of nonsense and everything uh, talking backwardness that's why i said you know, uh, a long time ago, I'm not going to do YouTube, right? Because I, I'm not going to give this no credibility, you know, other than that fact that if I get on your show, be pr feel yourself privileged that I get got on your show, you know, and everything. Because Kyle don't, don't validate everybody. I don't trust everybody. And so uh, uh, this idea of an Africa stand building is serious. It's as serious as a heart attack. We need to build uh, Africa for the future because if we're not – then you got 200 million people in the West of Af Black African descent, and you got almost a billion people on the continent, right, who are going to be enslaved, you know, slave with debt, slave with poverty, a slave with hunger, a slave with neglect. And so, therefore, because we don't want to sit back and be like, you know, something, well, live with your ancestors. And another thing is, no disrespect to the ancestors, right? But if our ancestors were so, uh, uh, what we our ancestors probably looking down like, don't be fools like we are. Get you know, get in those books, get in that knowledge, get that technology. That's what ancestors are up on high saying. You know, yeah. they ain't telling us to sit back and do like they did and whatnot, and end up on a slave ship, or end up being colonized and everything. A million, uh, ten million people killed in the Congo. It's because we were asleep. You know. Yeah, well. And other and the Africans, we as black people love fighting each other. You know, we'll fight each other. Oh, it's a great warrior. Well, how many white people we killed? None. We killed good. I'm like, I don't want to hear about some great king that never killed white people. And they, they, <laughs> get the fuck out of here, you know? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, man. I can't go with the oh Yarba King and uh and uh the homie with the killing white people. No. You yeah, know? It's, brother, it's always a trip to hear about all of these great uh nations in um nigeria and the great yoruba and the great this and the great whatever and it's like if it if these nations were so great it's like i mean where's where's all that where's all that magic that you have to where you put you put you put all these things on other black people yeah the juju how come your juju never works on the white man we're gonna call it you know that that's the story so i'm i'm, I'm trying to empower us to like hey if you know if we're gonna play those cards where is the destruction of you know, the oppressive system that you know that's been they don't they, they don't they don't do that because all they care about is is oppressing other black people you know you know they, they the white man's god the white man they, the most black people are sad around the world have accepted their lot as the bottom of society why do you think that uh um when you in africans i've I'm disappointed my african brothers right they're going to europe in large numbers right and they're trying, making videos trying to justify this right and uh, they're talking to white girls and everything like that, you know. 
and these preachers, uh, let me tell you something, how the new world order works, right? And I had to check this one white girl, a white lady on TikTok, right? She she blocked me, you know? I had to check her, <laughs> and she blocked me, you know? <laughs> I was going to go back to it today and do a little bit more. I was like, this shit's gone, man. She blocked me, you know what I'm saying? I need to troll them people, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just ask questions, man. You know, I would ask questions, uh, Miss White, Mrs. White Savior with a cape, you know, were you Captain Marvel or something? You're going to save a Negro? <laughs> And we're not, no, so I was asking some questions, man. So, uh, the, the whole point I'm trying to make is that uh, we as a race of people, right, uh, are doomed if we don't stand up for ourselves, you know, and we don't build something for ourselves, and you know, our race will disappear. You know, you got whole black people, like I said, my African brothers, right? They're going to Europe, they're dating white girls, and they're posting on Facebook and whatnot, you know, it used to be a time. If you dated a white girl, man, that was something you didn't tell nobody. You know? <laughs> These motherfuckers be like, yo, man, we're going to make beautiful babies. And everybody, oh, Africa's wow. like, going to be beautiful. I'm like, wait a minute here, right? If if these people are bringing these people back to Africa, right, and uh, they're going to be in positions of power, right? So what did it, so uh, here's another thing before I, what I'm thinking about, right? In Cameroon, there was a guy that ran for off high office, right? He was half Chinese, right? And he said, like, I'm a Cameroonian, but where's, where's his allegiance lie? The Beijing uses dude, you know? And and this guy, because Africans don't see, okay, this guy's mixed Chinese, we can't trust him or everything, right? But they'll but if you are a different tribe from them, they'll throw you under uh, under it. Like if you're English in Cameroon, if you're English speaking, they don't want nothing to do with you. But let a, uh, a guy be half Chinese. And this guy was like, I forgot what his name was. I'm going to try to look for it. Uh, and so this guy is basically, I'm like, how did this guy get so high up in the government? He's whole half Chinese. His allegiance is with Beijing, you know? And so I'm saying to myself, man, we are freaking doomed because Africans do not have this race conscience, you know? You know? You know, this is race conscience. They don't have, look, we need what? A land infrastructure nationhood. What is the nation? The black nation. You know, the, the people who are black African descent. That's it. You know, if somebody basically is mixed or whatever like that, you know, um, uh, 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 Mufasa, what's going on, Mufasa? Hope he can join us tonight on a, uh, on a thing. Uh, but the thing is, you're right, it's not taboo in Africa because they don't have the history of uh, race and stuff like that. In America, I was talking with Great Africa earlier. I said, yeah, when you come to America and you get socialized in America, you realize you're black, you know, and race means something. And, and, and all these guys out here talking about swirling, it's still dangerous for a black man to be seen in public with a white woman. You know, it's still dangerous. It's, it's 2022 is dangerous, you know? Yeah. Um, you know? And it's still absolutely. dangerous being with a white woman, you know, a, a white woman in public and everything, you know? And so, therefore, we have that consciousness. That's what drives us mostly in these directions because even even having white friends or being in white circles is dangerous you know i seen a guy not too long ago it was a video where this guy was a security guard in a white club right black guy right and he was arresting somebody patron whatever the cops came and beat his ass man messed his eye up you know and they said no he's not he's one of us he's one of us the cops didn't want to hear shit they fucked him up <laughs> see what i mean <laughs> you know and so and people yeah. act like I'm like, yo, th th this stuff is in embedded in the system. It's you know been embedded, you know. Where, so where you, you can't, I mean, how do you change? How do you change that without uprooting? You can't. You can't, you can't without, change without, it without pulling up the roots and you know, replanting it, something fresh. Check this out. That's why yeah. I told that white lady. She was like, basically talking about, you're not a white savior. You care. Well, I said, look, man. I just told her, right? And then she was like, that's an awful thing to say. And I said, look, <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth, lady. You know, said, no, said all these people. Went to my profile. I had 25 people visit my profile. So who is this motherfucker? You know, all these white people were like, who the fuck is this motherfucker talking like this? And I just told her, I said, look, you know, uh, we are under no obligation to like you. You know, if I know you <laughs> as a good person, you know, I said, if I know you as a person, you're cool. That's fine. That doesn't erase what your ancestors did. You know, that doesn't mean you're going to get a kumbaya moment from black people, you know, and black people have no obligation to like you or accept you. I said, look, if, if, if you are an employer, right, and you see that uh, uh, somebody needs to be hired and a black's qualified, you hiring that black person is not being a liberal. It's just doing the right thing. That's what Malcolm X yeah. said. Treat people yeah. like a freaking person. 
You don't get no credit for that. You know, you don't get no points or you don't get invited to the cookout and all this kind of stupid just for doing what you're supposed to be doing. And a lot of white people don't understand that. They think every time they benevolent to us or whatever, that we got, oh, yes, you know, kumbaya. No, it don't work like that. It don't change a damn thing. Yeah, serious, it doesn't. I mean, it don't change so a damn thing. Praise you and say, oh. I, I told her, I said, look, can you bring all those bodies back in slavery? No. All the towns we got burned down, all the shit they did to us, all the horrible things they did to us, they burned Wilmington down, took it over, and said this is a white man's country, even though the whites, the whites came from other states. They just heard about a city where black people were doing well, walking down the street and everything like that, and they came there and burned it to the ground for no reason. You know, the first coup that time in America overthrew the government, you know? It was a mixed-race government. You know, and, family. They, and so, so therefore, how, how do you basically go and say, okay, I'm a white person, uh, uh, I, I, I'm an ally to black people. No, you're not an ally. You just want uh, points for us to say you're one of the good ones so you can get us uh, to side with your other things that you're talking about, like the LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah. And all yeah. stuff like this. And the genders, they be, you know, folks be pushing. You got, hidden agen you got hidden agendas. They said that back in the days. Uh, the Communist Party. The communists came in here, and they basically said, look, let's go to the black and Puerto Ricans. Why? Because they're poor. But like, well, uh, uh, what about black people? We're not trying to better their life because if we better their life, they're not going to listen to us anymore. So therefore, there's people that like this. So this is what happens when people become Marxists, right? The people who say Africa should develop are, are basically Marxists. They believe, oh, capitalism is bad or industry is bad. We don't need no industries. So who's going to do this? Europe. And, and, and so, <laughs> therefore, so therefore, we stay in a, 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 a stagnant state. We're supposed to go back to living in mud huts. And we're supposed to go back to... Uh, uh, I think, and so the the mind that's in every person to want to do better, it's in every human being to want to build and progress. That's just human nature. Okay, if you don't do it now, the sad part about this is, like I was saying just a minute ago, was a lot of African brothers are going to Europe because they think Europe is the way to go. So they bought into this new world order that you don't have to develop Africa, just come to Europe. So you yeah. got so so Europe, man, white women, everything. And so now we're talking about building Africa for Africans. We get pushback from these same people. Like this dude, Kidola, you know, in Nigeria, talking about, I love, he just went on this whole thing, how he loved white people, but he talks about black America and the rest like we're dogs. But he loves white people, though. He's married to a white woman. You know? Yeah, for me, yeah, you can't have it both ways, man. You know, people like himself, I mean, your opinion don't ever matter. I mean, you sleep with an enemy. But before we continue on to our regular scheduled program, Let's definitely talk about these tours, brother. Let me have okay, pop okay, up brother. fires and and uh, just uh, share with people the things that we always practically uh, tell you, show you what we are involved in. So, family, this is our Pan African Black World right here, and these are the things that we're building. We're building, you know, from 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 Ghana to uh, Liberia, you know, to incredible tours and investment. To where we as a people can put our money together, put our energy together, and build our own in technological industrialization future. You know, in those uh, two words uh, specifically, uh, because with, with, with the incredible amount of land that we have, and the, the incredible layout of Africa, and the young generation, uh, we're gonna have to you know compete a little harder, and gonna have to make moves to where you know, our children are in a better position to compete. So. What you see at Black South Pan African community, the, the front of the community is organized to where you have a big community center, then you also have a big technology and business center. Now that way you can literally this, you know, from the social programs to the the trade programs that you know that that our, that our children really need to get into. That way, by the time we build the different industries, they have all of the talents and skills. To work there and work there in a competitive way to where you know you're competing and not saying that this thing is one two three overnight but at the same time too saying these are things that uh you know i learned when i was younger you know when i went to trade school in uh in new york city uh in brooklyn when i was a teenager electrical electronic uh, technology and then you learn <coughs> in other places but most of our children not going to have the access to that kind of education that early and then may not have access to join the military or go to technical school to learn to continue on their education 
And then now you have to also be out there to compete now. Other people are creating these uh, industrial jobs and these technical jobs. So are they going to hire you? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they need you for a low budget uh, work instead of your, your great mind. But we can change the scope of these things by building self-sufficient community. And with these self-sufficient communities, you're building all aspects of life, your medical, your dental um, buildings, your, your, your maintenance building, your education building and SAS training building. Uh, you're creating your own food production uh, as advanced as you want based on, based on using modern day technology. You know, which is you, you're going to have to step the game up with it because are we going to keep on doing uh, our same old methods of, example, ancient farming? We're going to have to step things up to another level, not saying. And, and uh, I'm one person I always believe in uh, what, you know, what our ancestors put in place and also what uh, we can use via technology and making it work. Uh, and I don't the Japanese did. Yeah, and I don't think and it's then, a situation where you just, it's just one or the other. I'm, I'm telling people, you know, you have to... Japanese, Japanese had a thing, they said, Japanese, uh, okay. Japanese spirit, Western technique. So in other words, basically, when they replace some of their uh, uh, factory, old factories, textiles with modern machinery, right, they use the same spirit of the Japanese uh, answer. They said, well, okay, well, all it is was a technique. You know, technology is not synonymous with Westernization modern or whatever or white or, or white or white people exactly right and so we can use tech technologies like anybody else but uh, but we use it for our own uh advancement you know that's what people don't understand they think technology is synonymous like this is uh, technology we only technology you know how can you on one hand say that we built civilization we gave the world technology and everything and then on the other hand when it comes down to actually doing it no that's white people stuff and uh, we don't need all that you know Make no yeah. sense, and that's why that's why I have to bring up always uh, Ethiopia and, and Egypt. You know, they didn't they they decide to you know continue and evolve. Now they're not dominant and and powerful like they 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 were in ancient time, but at the same time too, they didn't make their nations like you know some of the poorest nations on the planet. They made sure the nations are thriving nations, and you know even Ethiopia is making a great comeback. Uh, so yeah. I'm telling people that. Um, Stay focused, man. Stay focused. Uh, last I remember, you know, um, uh, you know, yeah, you have this Marriott chain, and they're everywhere, everywhere <laughs> on the planet. You know what I mean? Um, that man built, you know, an empire for his family to just live off for the, you know, for generations and things like that. So that's what we're doing here, family. We're building our own brand of Pan Africanism and nation building, and we're not here to to let anyone tell us how to do this. This is us. As a generation of people saying, "Hey, this is what we're gonna do for our future, and we're gonna do it regardless of who likes it or not." Not. I notice all of those haters that they used to come on on a regular basis. They like gone from Knox Sleazy to you know, <laughs> to, you know, to, to that 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 clown, uh, that Sierra Leone clown, uh, Amara, to Mar the Bush meeting eat fool, uh, yeah, Mike, meeting. Mike Olawa o Owala, or uh, whatever his call his name is, and things like that. You know what I mean? And I'm telling people, these people. Come out there and they run their mouth, but when they check it, you know we're out there doing work. You know, I was like, we're not. I'm not even on YouTube like that. All we do is come on here and share the things that we're doing, and and and, and share inspiration as far as how we see the game and how we can build a global black business pipeline. Which, which regardless if you're down with Pan Africanism or not, or you're down with, and as long as you believe, as long as you down with being black, that's all that should matters. You know, everything else work itself out as far as you know. Us doing business with each other, us making these moves together to where we you know we're coming up on land, and then we you know we're getting land clear. We're just building our future independence from that land, whether it's a factory, whether it's an industrial park, or whether it's a, you know whether it's a, you know a training facility or medical facility, or just anything that's going to just improve the life and the opportunity of us as a people. And I feel like all of these little talks from uh, some of these uh you know some of these haters. It really just throw the game off because you want your people in America to to, 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 you know, to respect the fact that you know we out there in Africa doing wonderful things, and mm -hmm. that that but at the same time too you don't want to pressure them like oh you have to come to Africa you have to do it like I tell people you don't have to do all of that you know but you can you know you can be here and you can just make great contributions and then when you're ready to come to Africa you know more things are open for you you know so yeah. don't stay here. And just wonder what's going on in Africa. You know, you can participate in many, many wonderful ways. You know, and and I'm not here to give people a list of things. I want people to use their minds and 
and brain because we have people out there in different countries doing great work. So that's a, that's a good start right there. You know, build a bond with them and help them get the things that they need to get. Like, for example, us right there, we have all of this land. We have 15 acres. Uh, plus, we have another 60 acres for those who are interested in get more land at Black Star Pan-African Community. Because we only got like one or two lots left on the 15 acres. But I'm saying to people, uh, we have people out there building something from the grassroots. This is one example. You can either support it. And if you don't want to support it, just stay out of our way. That's the best thing I tell people sometimes. If you stay out of our way and not hating and not trolling and not trying to sabotage what we're doing, that will help. Because people like myself, I'm dedicated every day to get up to where we can build something for ourselves and our future and our family. That's why we're into business. That's why me and Kala, we're business people. We're building brands of business to where our family will be able to, to evolve in those business and to expand and create other opportunities for brothers and sisters like ourselves. Because if we don't create these positions and these opportunities, family, uh, what are we going to keep on depending on the white folks to, to, uh, to create opportunities? And when they don't give us a job, we're going to keep on crying racism. Is that what we're going to keep on doing? So I'm telling us as a people, step our game up because it's not going to get any simpler. Uh, the less we, uh, less we build, the less we're going to be able to take care of our own folks. And the less our, our, you know, our people are going to be loyal to want to be amongst us. Because after a while, they're going to just be scrambling. You know, so these communities right here, family, are our future of what we're looking to build. And we're not just going back and forth to Africa just to go back and forth and enjoy the beautiful history and the beautiful culture. Because I love all of that also. But we're also building a vision to say, hey, you know, what if we just invest in land and spend the next 10 years putting the work into it? We'll have our own black ownership. I've been living in this, I've been in this county for, you know, for two decades. And I've seen the, the, the rich business people or rich white business people <coughs> put their money together and literally, you know, clear land, will build apartments, uh, build, you know, build factory, build business district. And, you know, and these things are this, these things are there. So no matter who comes in and out, they're going to, you know, they have to deal with these uh, you know, ent ent entities that set up. So we as a people, Got to get out of the mindset and this not in this instead of just looking at, oh, this is this bush, this is nothing. Oh, I want to uh, develop community. I tell people, hey, you want to develop community? We have plenty of them in, in Ghana and we can get you one. Now, if you want to, you know, you want to do something that's going to change the game for you and your family and our people, you know, let's learn how to do real estate development. Let's learn how to do real estate management. Let's learn how to, to, to learn the, the, the process, how to get land legally, how to build a community together and how to create our own aspects of life and create all the opportunities that we need to create. So, so that's it, family. So Black Star Pan-African Community, uh, these are just, uh, this is just a brochure. You know, once you're on our website, once you're on YouTube page, once you see the full documentation, you can just uh, process it. But uh, you, my number, my information is, is, is on the bottom. I'm always telling anyone if you're interested in even this uh, consultation, you can reach out to people like ourselves because what we know took us many years to know, and it took us experience going back and forth to Africa for 18 straight years, you know, to different countries, not just going there to just hang out and party and socialize. You're going there to, to build a network. You're going there to, to build a future. So there's a lot of things that uh, we can help people with. I'm always telling people reach out, connect, don't, you know, don't feel any way reaching out to someone, whether, you know, whether I'm younger than you or older than you. Uh, I have a lot of things ready to connect us. And the ones of us that are here, you know, whether you're a grant writer, whether you're somebody who do certain uh, programs, we have children, we have a whole, we have like 80% of the, the, the town is children. You know, so they, they need your help. They need your support. And, you know, we have to look beyond just our own children, our own direct people that we're living around and say, you know what, uh, let me, let me, let me contribute towards uh, uh, energy of building, um, you know, black excellence across the world. So, you know, you can have more of our brothers and sisters that, you know, have these background building these homes and also putting in modern infrastructure, you know, you know, and not saying that our people there in Ghana can't do it because, you know, they, they can do it. But at the same time, too, this is a project that we're trying to involve more people from the African diaspora to be a part of so we can connect more with our own people there in a country like Ghana. And then next thing you know, we're competing. Next thing you know, we have incredible, you know, you know, next thing you know, it's not just the Chinese just going around and building. 
you know, it's us as a people. But in order for us to compete, we have to step our game up. So that's why I'm always some people. Blueprint for Black <coughs> Power, like Dr. Amos Wilson, but it's not just reading it and feeling all good, but actually it's getting out here and competing, doing the work, and putting us together. So let me even make this uh, bigger. So, uh, you know, Carla, this is what we're talking about, man. And yep. uh, we can do this all over Africa. We're talking about Angola, Liberia. We're talking about, uh, and it's just all about, you know, us getting together and say we're going to do this. Yep. We're going to have one in Liberia. We're going to have one in Liberia, we're gonna have one in, uh, several in Angola. You know, that's a problem. That's the thing. You know, we have to get this one up and running to the point where, you know, it's, uh, it's going. And then we go look up to Liberia another year. And uh, we're... The, the land is no problem. We just need the people. You know, people want to join us. Uh, land is no land is going to be no issue as far as like us building stuff. It's just basically building and people coming in and saying, "Look, I want a a, 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 a piece of that. I want to be part of uh, uh, this African uh, uh, repatriation, uh, nation building movement, and stuff like that." And uh, I want to clear something up. We're not talking separatism in Africa. We're talking about development. You know. When we talk about developing, uh, we have to build these communities of like-minded people. There's just no other way, you know. Now, if Africa was already developed like it was supposed to be, but you know, we only had post World War II, and you got the Europeans are still entrenched in Africa and stuff like that, and the people in Africa basically understand Pan Africanism, but they're still part of the UK, it's a part of France, and all these stuff like this, and they're educated, and, they're, and these people, European people, and now the Chinese have billions of dollars to spend to brainwash Africans and China's making that thing. And even in China, the Chinese are now requiring some of their uh, 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 stuff be talked in Mandarin. The Africans have to afford to learn Mandarin, you know? So basically what we're saying is if you believe in Africa and you believe in mm -hmm. Africa, we have to show Africans that black first, African first and build in Africa or, or other than that, we're not going to have a chance. Because all these other people are coming in and basically colonizing Africa, you know, indirectly with language, with food, with uh, entertainment and stuff like that. One of the things we have going for us is entertainment. You know, a lot of Africans love African-American, African diaspora culture and entertainment. So we have that on our side. Right. This is why they want to poison our culture with this degenerate music that they're putting out now. So we can't. So so therefore, there's a disconnect. Back in the '70s, '80s, uh, 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 our our musicians dominated the world. You know, now what they're doing is deliberately trying to destroy Black culture in America by putting the most vile filth in everything. So we have nothing to connect with. So therefore, we have basically, uh, as far as like the culture and the language, and then these people come up with this idea of ADOS FBA, division among black people in the diaspora and all this kind of nonsense and everything. So therefore we have a lot of challenges, you know, and the Chinese are on code, right? You don't see Chinese fighting each other over what province they came from when they go to Africa. They're all Chinese when they when they deal with us. And they come there, they're trying to colonize, they're not trying to fight each other, they're united, they they unified. Even China, even other Asians are on point 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 on code with each other when it comes to dealing with black people. Europeans are on court when they're dealing with Africa. Why do you think the European, the, the sanctions on Zimbabwe still exist? You know, if it was just about the UK or the, uh, the Great Britain, the sanctions on Zimbabwe were there. But all these white countries up there are on code. We're the only group of race of people that think we're gonna basically be uh, individual uh, people and deal with the world uh, uh, with a slack hand. It doesn't work like that. Us build, we building these communities in Africa and trading with Africa, building industry. It shows that we are uh, uh, the, uh, the the diaspora of African the slave descendants are part of the future of Africa. The more we build on the continent, the more we visit, the more we uh, make connections and everything. They know that there's another option besides Europe and China. They have us, and that's Africa's key uh, uh, weapon that it has. It's all these millions of black people. Who are now becoming Afri African centered and African consciousness. That's the future. And so, therefore, uh, there's people that's going to try to stop us. You know, there's people that tried to come in and all that, but these people are fading away because guess what? 
I'm still here, and Bomani's still here. They tried their best and everything. Oh, you guys calling us colonizers. Oh, you guys are trying to do light barrier 2.0. All this stuff like that is basically people who are trying to stop the inevitable, which is us returning and building with Africa and building black America through Africa and everything. That's the future. And the people that realize now that they can't stop us, right? They don't know what to do. I don't know what their next move is because they thought that if, if there was this big backlash and everything, yeah, there was problems, you know, there was problems, but Hey, you know, the bag family's still there. You know, they're still doing that thing. They didn't leave, you know? And so the bottom line is we're determined to do what, we, uh, what we're going to do. What we have in Ghana, we're going to have in Liberia or Congo, Zambia. We're going to build these communities and everything. We're going to build these industrial zones. We're going to build this stuff. We're going to create pipelines between black cities that we control in America and the West to the continent of Africa. We're going to start building our own supply chains and all stuff like this and everything. And the question, what it asks is, some people ask is, if we're prospering, uh, some of us don't even know how that might sound. All we know is how to be oppressed. This is why when the sister made the video tomorrow, oh, we don't need all somebody, it gets scared. You know? You know, they get scared. They get scared the fact that, okay, wow, if we don't have oppression, if we see black people building and doing something, then I mean, I got to get up and do something. A lot of black people, that frightens a lot of people. That frightens a lot of people, you know, that you have to basically uh, get up and do something because, you know, we're, we're winning against the white supremacists and everything. A lot of people don't even understand what that means. <clears throat> we just say, wait for the white supremacy. So let's don't do nothing but sit around waiting for a reparations check. There you go, man. So it's a, it's a beautiful question for you. As we're chilling in paradise, you know what I'm saying? I got the coconut tree going on. Got the, you know, I got the, you know, the sand with the aklabu water. All right, our, our brother said, uh, with the stated, with, uh, excuse me, with that stated, do you think that black people need leadership or drivership given our present mental state? And that's one well, of those well, things, um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to get our people to to follow uh, leadership instead of following the blind because that's what we, you know, is right. doing. Example, um, following the blind is all the foolishness that goes on YouTube. More people come around and put more foolishness and and garbage on there, and polluting, uh, and polluting the mind of our folks. Like whenever you look up anything about uh, whatever part of Africa, you know, it's that it, it don't tend to be uh, serious stuff. It tends to be this, you know, most of the times it's partying and you know, and I'm in Africa, you know, I'm, and uh, it's uh, hanging on. And I'm, I'm not in, trying to like, I'm in Africa eating the, food, food, you know. Yeah, I'm not, and I'm not trying to talk down, but I'm like more of the serious things, you know, we're not tackling is kind of what I want people to, you know, to, to understand. We're using our YouTube channel for, you know, just playing around and uh, not nothing uh, serious. And even some of the ones that we have here in America, the same thing, just uh, playing around on YouTube to where, you know, it's like, it's it becomes this YouTube battle, this YouTube war, or you know, how many people I can just you know, beg for money, or you know, I, you know, I don't understand any of these end goals. I do understand that you know, you use different platforms to you know to make your business work and make your money and things like that, which is absolutely fine. But it's like you you know, we're looking for the serious energy of this. That's like you and I talk about pan Africanism towards nationhood, a serious subject. It's um not the the simplest thing to 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 to, to push and everything, but it's like you're telling people. Because, you know, even where we, we came up with this big banner was because of all the hate about Pan-Africanism. So I'm telling people, you're confused. Pan-Africanism is a vehicle to get us in the direction mm -hmm. of having our own nation. And mm -hmm. if it's not that direction and that progress, then what are we really doing? Are we just really just uh, so surviving just to be people, modern day slaves, you know, and and thing? So then people know, man, uh, family, um we're going to provide leadership and you know but 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 it's like we're not here to babysit people and you know but because that's what people want people want you to drive them and push them and things like that no I've had, I've had to let a few uh, people go because i'm like yo this is a this is a war and we're gonna have casualties and maybe you're the sacrifice because you know are you really serious about what we're doing to you know to really you know compete or are you just gonna like sit back in this and sometimes you know part of that fight is you have to destroy your own uh your own you know your own people uh within that's in your way you know what i mean uh, you have to go through the cleansing 
Like this year, brother, it's been damage control operation. You know what I mean? Uh, for, you know, having to you know having to destroy the Negro Pian to where now mm-hmm. all he does is make he make his little cute little videos with his little with his little white uh, white tranny wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's all relationships. They talk about well, your relationships now, you know. Yeah, I mean, you these guys are serious. It's like you know, you fail as a black uh, uh, oversight. Where am I? You can pay. Where am I? As a black oversight. Yeah, you know. Yeah. He, 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 it's kind of like that movie uh, in a menace of society when he brought them into their room and said, "You don't mess up now." <laughs> yeah. I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep my language clean. Yeah, um, menace. You know? Yeah. You know, well, I, I, told, I told him, I told him, I told him, I told him, I said, dude, you done <laughs> fucked up, man. You went after the wrong one. You, we came after Bomani. I was like, oh, he fucked up, you know? And before I said, fear of success is a real, yeah, fear of success is a real thing. A lot of black our people, right? And when we talk about Liberia, it was a successful country. Let me talk about Liberia for a minute. It was a success, you know? And black people can't realize there must be a catch to it. They must enslave the natives. They must, like, it's black people. Uh, 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 we don't like success, man. Paul Kagame is doing extraordinary work. He's about to make his country a first world country. Boy, the, the hate I see among black people for Paul Kagame. What did he do? Does he drive around in limousines? Is he in the, in the World Cup right now? You know, he's Good there point, every brother. day picking I mean, up trash in this country. You know, he's down there. Be real about the people for the work. Dirty. I mean, you know? yeah. So what I'm saying is this black people don't understand what it's like to be successful. Why? Because you, we as a race, some of us, right? Some of us don't like success because it means accountability. It means that I can't uh, sit back and uh, uh, bellyache. And I'm not going to uh, bellyache with Pete nobody no more. We showed you the way. If you don't are not satisfied with Africa, look, I mean, America, <coughs> yo, <coughs> excuse me, there's a, there's a continent that we could develop. Is it going to happen overnight? No. But uh, what one thing I know about other races of people, right? You ask an Indian person, right, from India, right? Do you want to see the first Indian president? They look at you like, what do I care about that for? You ask a Chinese person how many elected officials they got. They don't even know. <laughs> but they're thriving. Black people in America, right? We basically uh, 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 are the only group of people, right? Because we don't have a homeland to look at, right? And say, this is where I, I am. So we have we put all eggs in America. And then they gave us this president called Barack Obama, you know? And for eight years, the, the racism has gone way worse, you know? Black people have lost so much wealth under Obama, and so much power and prestige. And we are weaker now because of Obama's presidency than we ever were politically. Nobody respects us. And so, therefore, uh, you got a black president. And, and we're like, why do we think it was so necessary to see a black man in the White House, you know? And so now I think people are now are starting to say, what is their next? The next stage of this, of, of our development is the journey home, is nation building. We have to start building Africa, building Africa because there's nothing left. We reached the plat the mountaintop in America. We built a black middle class. You put a okay for all it's worth. You put a black family in the White House. What else is there? Right. Either we're just going to keep going down, or we're going to look for enough else because they're clearly trying to replace you with these Latinos and everything like that in America. Teach, brother, teach. You know. <laughs> so therefore, what does a black man have? And then they look at black America over the last eight. Eight, nine years since Obama the president, 10, 15 years. Black re- females and male relationships are at all time low. You got p- black men who are going overseas to the Philippines and all those people called passport bros and everything. The black women in America are single moms and everything. There's no unity. The black man is not res- needed in his, co- in his community and he's not respected. So, therefore, what do you, what black men, what are you holding on to? Why, why isn't there a time where we start building Africa as a base where we could research uh, what the most important thing our manhood? Okay, in America, we're not we're not men. You know, we're not men. I hate when I see black men get up there. You got big, strong black men. Oh, we're so. Instead of basically, when you sit in front of Donald Trump or Biden and everything, you should be like, listen, to this guy, like, yo, look, with the confidence and the swagger. Of a man, 
I've seen Joe Biden basically fuss black people out on that conference, the video call. You seen that with Al Sharpton? And he didn't say nothing. That's what we got to. You got an imbecile like Joe Biden talking down to you like that, telling you you ain't black if you don't vote for him. And stupidity. All, all, straight stupidity. All, all and everything. So what other humiliations do we have to suffer? Yeah, this is the foolishness that we put up with, man, and then think yep. it's okay. It's not okay. It's, it's black people. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay to uh, the the crime we see in Black America. It's not okay the uh, the problems we see, the self hate, black men hating each other, black men hating on each other, black men killing each other. It's starting to even affect the so called conscious community, which basically uh, I'm I'm shocked at. You know, there should not be. We should have uh, discussions. We should have debate. We should have meaningful debate, right? But we should be the example to the rest of the black community that black men could sit there and talk about their problems, their differences, and iron them out like men. Let me tell you something about man. Uh, what a man is, right? One thing a man is this. A man realizes, right? Like I, I learned this from watching my father, right? That you're not going to always win. It's how you deal with losses, how you deal with adversity, how you deal with setbacks. That defines a man. A woman could be emotional. I didn't get my way. I'm going to stop my feet. Or I don't agree. To That's women. But a man has to look at the world rationally and practically. This is what I can do. This is what I'm able to do. This is what I'm going to do. If you are a plumber, be the best plumber you can. If that woman doesn't like you because of your profession, so what? Find what somebody that does. But what you don't do is, I see now where, I don't know where this is coming from, you have a lot of girls right now talking about, oh, I, I want to do that's a thug. What, what Instagram models that I like to do is a thug. He carried a gun and all that. So you got a lot of young, impressionable boys out here who think, if I want to impress that girl, I got to be a thug. And you grew up in a two-parent home, mom and everything, but you out here being a thug. This just happened in Virginia Beach this week, right? A young black <laughs> guy, 28 years old. You heard about that? Oh, uh, no. This was, guy shot, was, shot, was shot and killed by a cop, right? Virginia Beach, right? The backstory was this. He was like, uh, and uh, his family said, look, we're not talking about it. He just got with the wrong crowd. He stole a car, right? He stole a car. And him and his wife or his fiance, whatever, some Puerto Rican girl, right? And uh, and they had this thing where we're gonna die together or whatever like that. She's putting it in his head. She's in jail, right? Talking. I could tell she put that in his head because this guy had no criminal record or nothing, really. And he was a twenty-year-old guy. He was a worker, a blue-collar worker. But uh, what happened was uh, he fled the scene, right? And he came back, and she had a gun. And the cop comes home, put the gun down, right? And he came back, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what she passed the gun to or whatever. He said, "Put the gun down," and the cop killed. What's the what so big Bonnie and Clyde? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. And no. so I'm saying to myself, and she's on, she's on the news crying. Oh, but we love each other. We say, well, I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Some stupid ghetto ass bitch causes his brother to lose his life. You know, he has, mm -hmm. I think he has a, a, a two year old son named after him. Cause him yeah, to lose his life. That's a bad situation. Um, uh, uh, some of these guys are motivated beyond this uh, stupidity. I mean, is that, you know, have, have no direction, no leadership. And, and then, right. Imagine no, if this guy was listening to College I mean, Genesis, right? Your real sister, you know, you you you, you want a brother that's you, you want a brother that's looking to build a future for you and your family. They, they lie you these mean, girls. You don't you don't want you don't want you don't want, you don't want them to get into certain things. Literally, they, lie these women out are out here now. We have a culture now where women are telling that's all they want. They was thugs and uh, thing, yeah, they, they can keep on thinking that's cool. It's like you know, people glorify certain things. It's like. The people who grew up in in that world, and that's what you, and that's where you grew up at. You know, it's just what it is. You know what I mean? But it's like, even yeah, but hold on. They're in Virginia Beach. They're not even in the hood. They're in Virginia Beach. But they, <laughs> but that, that's the what they want. And this is what I'm saying. You got people growing up in middle class environments, right? This one girl that's Instagram. She grew up in a two parent home. Two parent home. Catholic school girl. Whatever. Middle class environment. She's like, I like the streets. I like the thugs. I like the gangs. I like the this. I like the that. And that's what I'm saying. You got people growing up in middle class environments, right? This one girl that's Instagram. She grew up in a two parent home. Catholic school girl. Whatever. She's like, I like the streets. I like the thugs. And everything. No, you I like don't. That. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, and, but but that's what they they're attracted to. And so I'm saying to myself, our culture is being poisoned. Why? Because that is what's seen as real men in this culture, right? Not the na black nationalists. You know, this is what they did over the years, right? They were just real men. 
You're looking at them right here. Black yeah, men real men. Real men like us. We're real men. Real men. And black men that's creating opportunities for their own people and, and taking responsibility. This is this not, is I, this I, would, I would never knock what other people gotta do to, to make some moves, but it's like it's about time you know we, we start uplifting the fact that you know a real black man is a black man out there working building nations, working with his people, doing progressive things in his community. Exactly. And they're causing issues and problems. You know, exactly. Out there's a force of uh, of support and a force of just something positive. And that's and, why this that's and then why this be movement. Cool to get with a man like that because he's gonna take care of you, he's gonna be respectful to you and show you some love. But next thing you know, you, you know, you're dealing with certain people. Next thing you know, you're 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 you know, you're just you know, you're, you're you know, you're a bystander. I right. hate to say those things. Next thing you know, you're rolling and you know, it, things go down for real, for real. And then yes. next thing you know, it's not so fun and games now when you know you're in that situation. You know what I mean? So it's well, like I've seen some of these women, so man. Even these when they see people get shot, they get an adrenaline rush. Like my man fought for me. He's a soldier. You know, he's dead, he's laying dead. And when and they, they act all dramatic at their funeral and whatnot, you know, got the t-shirts and whatnot, you know, it's so sick. Yeah, you know? it's, it's been, yeah, especially you know, like I tell people these things in movies is you see somebody get shot in movies, it's something else. But when you see your own family members, your own friends getting this taken out, gunned down over chains, jury over this, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, and you've seen that in your life, you know, yeah. you're not wishing that on anyone. You're not wishing that that's not a cool situation. That's just, you you know, you, you're there where you live at, and you just, you got to survive and things like that. But it's like for people now, you know, now that, you know, people like myself be out of the hood, and I see people glorifying, I was like, nah, fam, that's not something to glorify. I mean, I've seen that life take a lot of my brothers and. I'm one of the ones. Yeah, I, I lost three cousins here. today. Like, and then you, you know, you, you, you know, you, you appreciate life because, you know, that's and like, it's, you know, same thing in Jamaica. You just, you know, you grew up, you know, you went to school with certain people, and, you know, and you just, you know, and you're just sometimes you just want if you're the lucky ones, you know, that, you know, but it's like we got to get away from that, man. I want to see my brothers, and I mean, I know it's like an age where everybody got guns now, but I want to see my brothers just do something more positive. I just get tired of hearing. I mean. And it's been like all my life. It's not, and then it's just gotten worse. Then you move, yeah. from, you move from this location to the next location, and it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's why the only time I feel safe in my life, brother, is when I'm in Africa. I'm being honest with you. Yeah, I feel that's safe all, when I'm. I, 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 the I only time I literally too. feel safe is when I'm on the African continent. When I'm in a, with my my peers, and we know, we know, even if we're leaving from a club and things like that, like, you know, like you know, like you won't even see me at a modern day club here. It just, oh. you know, like I tell my son, my son will tell you. It's like my daddy's always working. You know, only time I see him go out is when he's in Africa, take his group members out and showing them a good time. Mm -hmm. and other than that, it's just it's 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 not it's not in the same game anymore. It's like you know, back in the days, you and your friends, like I used to club in Virginia Beach or Norfolk. Oh yeah, yeah. Back in my naval days, man, brother, that was that was the funnest time ever. Yeah, the worst thing, the worst thing I can think of what happened is that maybe something happened and you know you know you you get arrested and the military come get you or something. And that's the worst thing happened. But nowadays, you know, I mean, you step into a parking lot, you just bump into somebody. Next thing you know, that person goes Guns are coming you, out. Just gunning you down. And you ain't even saying nothing. And it's just like, there's any little volatile situation. Or maybe you just, you know, you know, you go up in a club and you just, you get the fine. You go to the gas, you down the day, you go to gas station and you get shot. <clears throat> you, look at, you look at somebody the wrong Movie way. Movie all kind of stuff. Like these things, they even used to be a situation, but it's like, it's so flooded with guns everywhere, man. You know, you have pawn shop. You go into a supermarket, you come out with a gun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So when I'm in countries like um like Tanzania, like in Zanzibar Island, you mm -hmm. almost don't see little. You see little to no guns. You see, you know, it's just paradise. Mm -hmm. Um, and and it's everywhere I've been in Africa. For me, and for me, yeah, yo, and check this out. Like, very was so it's safe, okay. brother. What people will leave their money on the street, right, in boxes, right, the vendors. <clears throat> they can leave their stuff on the street, right. walk up a couple blocks, come back, and nobody will steal it. You know, yes, I noticed that in Senegal too. I noticed, I noticed that. You know, I was like, does anybody? And, that, and that's what I'm talking about: an organized society. And as much as people call us, uh, our people, savages and crazy names in Africa, our people are more, uh, our people are more moral. Because one thing I, I see whenever people have issues, you know, like I would, you can literally stand here in in, in a car and see someone argue for an hour. No guns. Yeah. No fists coming out, and you know they usually we say like where we're from. You know, it don't take it don't take nothing but about maybe not even about back and forth. There's one word here, one word here, and then the fist is coming out. But nowadays the guns is coming out. Yeah, and what you call my driver in Liberia, right? 
And when you got drive like Nigerians are the craziest drivers in the freaking world, right? <laughs> fuck you, fuck your mother, fuck your mother, fuck your mother, fuck you. I'm like Jumbo. I was like, yo, fuck you, fuck your mother. You know that? I was saying, next thing you know, see the guy again. Okay, how you doing? They're waving, you know. You know, but it's a different culture, you know. We have the culture in America. We have so much, but we have the culture of death, you know, among us, you know. And this is what we're seeing. Black men are ten times the uh, uh, black black murdered ten times the national average. That means you take uh, Hispanics, white, everybody. We're ten times more likely than anybody to die of gun violence. We make up sixty percent, sixty almost going on seventy percent of all homicides in America are black men, or black people in general. You know, seven percent, and we're thirteen percent of the population. There's something wrong. There's a gen- culture of genocide and death, and that's why they promote death, genocide, materialism, all this stuff on us every day. This is why we have to tell people all the time, there's got to be another way. There's got to be another uh, place for us and everything. Because America's told us that it's never going to let us be happy here. It's never going to let us have peace here. You can have a nice house in the suburbs. I see black people all the time. They got nice houses and everything, but they're not happy. Why? Because everybody, I was at a restaurant the other day, right? I think I told you this. I'll tell you something like See the older brother, see an older brother, right? And he was walking, heavy said, older brother. He was like, he's, I think he was a pastor or something like that. And he looked at me, right? And he was like, looked at me with, like, with such fear. And I bowed my head and said, how you doing, sir? And then he smiled, right? And he looked at his white smile. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. And he was just so happy yeah, that I wasn't up. like, what the hell, you know what I'm saying? And he was just so happy. And I felt like telling him, Papa, Baba, you're my, you're my, you're my uncle, elder, you know? You know, go right ahead because I was walking over bumping into each other. I was like, I said, oh, yo, 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 I felt like hugging him and saying, brother, man, I, oh, elder, my elder, I love you. You know, I would never disrespect or, or do anything to harm you, or whatever, like that. But then, but, but then he looked at me and I looked at him like it's like it's like we all both hark back to a better time. You know, yeah, you know, uh, this that other thing. So he talks to his lady, yeah, yeah, you know, I said, yeah, you know, so. Basically, that's what I mean by black love. You know what I'm saying? Black love. Bring people back to the old times when we loved each other. You know, we 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 fellowship with each other. You know, you say, brother, how how is he? How's the kids doing, man? How's the grandkids doing? How's 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 your brother doing? How's things going? You know, you know, yeah, man. If you want to come by sometime, man, hey, yeah, come by, man. Come by the house. Let's catch up on old times. You know. These are the things we're talking. This was important, you know, important. And we need to have places where we can do that fellowship, where we don't have to worry about being judged, you know, for how much money we have, how much they, we want to be prosperous. But we want to be prosperous to the point where we can do things to help people, you know? That's what the world I want to see, you know? That's the world I do when I was a kid, you know? But our people looked out for each other. Our people respected the elders. Our people respected women. You know, you know, women in our community were respected. You know, they weren't called bees and dots and all the stuff like this. Women respected themselves. They didn't get up there uh, uh, shaking their ass all over the place and everything like that. We was, we was a different culture. You know, so this is what we're talking about tonight, folks. You know, uh, 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 we, we, uh, black people, we have, we can be modernized. We can learn all the stuff and everything. But we basically have to never forget who we are. You know, so, uh, so that little paragraph in philosophy ago, the aptitude of Negro is coming from himself. Yeah, and that philosophy of opinion, Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey said that. He said the only race of people that they don't want to, uh, they won't obey is their own. I don't know what that comes from. You know. Yes, yes, I'm telling you. Right in the West, particularly here in the West. And as a you black know? man who uh, runs his business since he's been running his different business since he's been in his twenties, whoo man, I'm, I've, I've Ridiculous amount of situation where you know you could easily say if you were someone else you wouldn't have this issue. All right, you're a white man. If you're a white man, you hate you hate man, white, you, man, you have black people. If, if this was a white operation, talking about pan African nation, man, we have a thousand people in the chat room. We have freaking uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, people talking about yeah, I'm going, man. You know, if you were DJ Vlad, uh, 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 whatever, it, it's gonna it's gonna happen. A white guy's gonna come in here and take over the Pan African movement, right? <laughs> and put us out of business, man. Because Negroes will follow him with that. We like, I'm like, I give up. 
you know, you, know, you always got a you always got a white savior in every you know the white every, savior every, coming, coming I, 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 savior. they show put them in every movie. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember the, the movie uh, uh Almost Christmas with Gabriel Union. I can't stand that bitch, but it was a good movie. With Danny <laughs> Why they have a white guy at the table at the end? Remember that you saw that Mamai, right? I said, I said, they're having a Sunday dinner, Christmas dinner, when they have a white guy. I'm like, what the hell? You, what, 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 Danny Glover? I'm smack, I know you was behind this nigga. Smack, like, what the hell you bring the white guy at the table for? You know? Hey, man, the, those, are the, those are the easy days of, of the agenda. Now the agenda is taking on to a whole different level. <laughs> they're not even hiding it no more, you know? They're not even hiding it no more. There's, there's, no, there's no more closet. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're just coming out with that shit, man. It's like, damn, man. It's like, damn. You know, uh, uh, you know, you had your son. Uh, is uh like uh, 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 uh Dwayne Wade's son. He's with a white boy as his boyfriend. You know, you know his boyfriend. Yeah, not not only is he transgender, right, but his love interest is a, a twelve years old. You know, kissing you know, brother, it's, it's, it's a shame that uh, you know that these two these two clowns are doing that to that child. You know, what I mean, um, you know, beyond just a military uh, mindset, just as a you know, as and beyond just a, a parent, I mean, this is a child. Children yeah. don't make, children don't make no de- decision and they don't run nothing. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know this modern day world. When you know, you know, we know we have children and you know sometimes you, you tend to give them their ways, but this is not just you know, you know, oh, giving this PlayStation Five and he didn't really work hard to get it. Mm-hmm. This is some situation of changing your 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 whole your whole God creation that you're made. Be, they don't believe in God. These are Satan. Yeah. These are Satanists. I mean, this have to be some level of, work, of, of some 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 devil stuff, right? Here. I mean, literally. I mean, this is a child. You, you know, what I mean, you're you're supposed to be influencing a child to 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 grow up to build greatness, to grow up to to, to preserve life, to grow up to, to you know to, and then you literally just telling other parents that it's okay. A child come home and say you want to be a girl today. Then the you know what I don't understand, right? <laughs> I, I don't yeah. see I don't see anybody in the so-called black conscious in the pan african talking about this. You know, I don't see anybody mm-hmm. in the pan african so they'll say, well, I don't want to offend nobody because you think, you, know, you, you think yeah. your YouTube or your TikTok views are more important than telling the truth. You know, yeah, I mean you, I don't I don't think you, have, you can be I don't think you have to be uh uh, offensive and disrespectful when you're talking about just tell like it is, you know. And, then, um, and as a person that's uh, look, looking, you know, that's always down to talk about all of these things, and especially when I tell people about our community, and our community, you know, I'll 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 do business with the, uh, the, the, the Chinese or the Japanese or you know a, a European company, but this is our community, and this is the people that are living there look like us. And we're building what we're building, and we're building based on our values, and that's mm-hmm. what it is. And there's no debating and no negotiating about it, and things like that. But you know, you have to draw the line on certain things. You can, you know, you can be kind and respectful to people, and work with people, and do things with people. But you know, we have to hold the line and say, hey, you know what? My family is going to be about nation building. My family is going to be about man, woman, and child. My family is going to be mm-hmm. about us doing what we need to do to build a respectful society. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and you know, and if people want to take that route and do what they need to do, that's their business. But at the same time, too, we're talking about a child, and we're talking about some a, a situation where you know you clearly, you know, it's it's a it's a situation about finance. You know what I'm saying, I'm like, how much money do you need to make? How much money do y'all have? I mean, I'm not saying that they're rich based on you know you know because they have you know your career could be just like a job. You know, you just make enough to just get by or whatever. But it's like. I don't think that they're they're hurting like that to really just literally just you know, but it's 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 definitely an opportunity thing because now you 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 know now when you support now when you have these little things going on and you support these agendas, the agenda people are gonna be throwing cash at you like you're a stripper at one of these. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. You know, this uh, throwing big money at you. You know, what I'm saying making it really rain, and that's mm-hmm. sad that you know we sell our soul for that. But I'm disappointed by those two man. Those two are clowns and. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. hopefully, hopefully the and you know the ancestors uh get them you know do what the what they really uh deserve. Yeah, my, my thing is this, and one oh. thing I know about in the black community, right, right, you know, you see, raising me wasn't just my mother, my mother, and father, father, and mother, right. I had aunties, I had elders, right. They would come to my mother as a young woman. This is what you should do with your children. Ultimately, my mother had to make a decision. My grandmother was there. My grandmother of the other side was there, you know, and you have to do this with children. This is what the children do. Uh, do. This is what a man does. 
my father basically had a mentor, my elder uncle Al. Yeah, he was el oh, this is what, uh, you know, and my uh, uh, pastor in a church. He would come by the house and whatnot, you know, and talk to uh, talk, mentor my father and whatnot. So it was a support system. Why? Because you're bringing children into the world. And so this myth that we need white people around us or this system, the government is a lie. We had in our community where we had families that like when I was a kid, we used to bring the white kids right to the city from upstate New York, right? And they were so shocked because they never seen families like this before. You know, they were like, "Wow, your uncle, man, he's a great man. He's your aunties, and whatnot." You know, they like we used to take them, bring them to church in the city. You know, they were like, "I say, yeah, we ain't come from no slum." You know, they said, "Wow, all these people, black people out here that got jobs and they're hardworking and stuff like that." You know, they're like. I said, yeah, and the kids are so well mannered and whatnot. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and all stuff like this. And I'm saying to myself, yeah, that's what we were. But they tried to cover that up in our community and make it seem like we were just, oh, uh, we need the government program and everything. No, we, all we needed was basically uh, people leave us alone. That's the first thing, right? And if we need jobs and everything, give us a job, you know? Give us a job, you know? You know, you know let the black man have a job you know, so he can feed his family. That was too much for them. That was too much for them. They got to basically uh, no the black man can't get a job and all stuff like this. And you, you try to break up our families and everything like that. But a lot of us stay strong. You know, a lot of us stay strong in this culture. And so uh, 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 we have to get back to that. We need a place where we can build a black family. That's what I'm all about. You know, I'm not into this to go over there to party and run around and stuff like that. You want to do that? Fine. But I want to see the black family have a chance. You know, and I know that we can only do that if we build our own communities outside of America, you know, because look what happened um, in DeSoto, Texas. I don't know if I sent you that video, right? Uh, uh, last year, there was this lady, black lady in DeSoto, Texas, right? That's supposed to be the new black enclave, right? I should have known it was too good to be true, right? <laughs> it also said she was on the friggin' uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, the school, right? My son, my son could die. They talking about gangs. I said, DeSoto, Texas, you got to be kidding me, right? And she's ripping the friggin' uh, ministry. She says, man, what do you want me to do? These kids are gangs. And y'all, we send these kids to school and everything. And I just politely asked the lady, right? Where's the, where's your, where's the son's father? He's in there, his life one night. I said, then why are you crying to the school? So like, she was crying, like, do something. I don't want to lose my baby. I don't want to lose my baby. You know what I mean? Like that. And then a couple of weeks ago, I saw this uh, video where somebody was, it was in the mall in South Texas, and it was overrun by thugs, you know, just in the thing. And you heard about that shooting that happened in Atlanta. A 12-year-old boy got shot in, outside of uh, the, the subway station in Atlanta last week, you know, 12-year-old yeah. boy. Yeah, this was recently. Don't remind me about it, brother. It's, yeah, um, and so so my whole thing is this. It's, um, it's Families a bunch are breaking of, it's a apart, of and this is what's going on in black America. You know, you know, yeah, because cool. it's the culture. It's the culture that they allow. You know, who who decides to make uh, the worst type of vile rappers to go into our kids' minds and then pull their minds with this garbage? You know, it's saying people. You know, the, you know, rapper, I mean, the rappers are gonna come after you. They're gonna be like, well, you don't. Why don't you say this about the actors? They out there making violent movies. Well, well it's like this. Uh, music is different, right? If people yeah. understand about music, right? Music is a powerful. Fella Kuti said music is going to be the weapon of the future. When you listen to a song, right, certain rhythms and stuff like that, that goes into your soul. You know, you could, uh, certain songs and certain rhythms could send people to war. You could send people to war, certain beats, certain tempos, right, when they march and stuff like that. You know, you could care people up for war. Every time when warriors get to war, there's certain beats, drum beats and everything that gear you up for war, you know? Remember in uh, the, the, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey? Homer, when uh, when uh, the sirens, right, they would sing mm -hmm. and they would, they would have to put stuff in their ears so they wouldn't hear the songs, Why? Right? Because it sounds so beautiful, they would smash their ships on the rocks. And so therefore they're like, oh, they would basically, they would have to hold themselves down and put something in there so they would hear because it's so be the music was so beautiful. They said they gotta see it. Music is powerful. You know, music is powerful. Music is a powerful thing. And so what, I, what this tells me is that these people, not only do they hate us, they're coming for our children and they're coming for blood. 
when they allow people like YGA, Young Boy, the uh, the thug music, the culture, and everything like that, the death, destruction, the young thug, and everything. And they, the guy, uh, Leah Co or Cohen, said, "I'm just trying to make money." And they and they spread this stuff out there and telling people gang drill music, right? They have everybody have guns and everything like that, you know, and they're showing guns and everything like that. What do you think that's doing? That's telling the young people get a gun, you know. Yeah. And so they and, live, you know. And brother, uh, I grew up in an age where you know people carry guns and bring them to school and things like that. But brother, this this is this is a, this is on a whole different level. Oh yeah, and, same thing with me. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen nothing like this in my when life, you, man. You can just drive up to an area and everybody's strapped. Yeah. Literally, literally. And all they have to hear is one gun go off and everybody pulling out. Yeah, and um, it's um, it's it's just unbelievable. Like I said, brother, that's why I love Africa. Um, it's just peace, man. I was on Zanzibar Island. I don't think I saw one gun or heard one gunshot. The only thing yeah. I remember hearing in my room is <coughs> it's just the shores, it's just not the beach, because the beach is just right there. And this, uh, the, the peace and the paradise. Waking up in the morning, you know, the sun is rising, and you know, this right. uh, beautiful right. day. Well, we got build, we got build, we got build more of that. You know, mm -hmm. the Africa is a place we could build our civilization Man. over again. You know, because it's not happening here, folks. I don't know how much money you have, if you if you don't fear, if you can't uh, live in peace, it don't mean nothing. Hey, uh, um, uh, you want to put the link in the chat room? See if somebody will come in. I think yeah, Fosso, then we can get my Fosso on. See if he wants to say something. Somebody said Nigeria bans ATM cash withdrawals over 200 a week to force the use of CBDC. What the hell is that? I don't even know what that is. No, but what I was going to do is go through some of these comments while we post the link. So let me just scroll up to now post some of these comments here. All right. Uh, let's pick one. We got, all right. This brother right here said a few things. Christopher, glad to see and hear you guys. Love being in Africa, but unfortunately, many of us have to return to the U.S. to work. It's hard to come up with the ideas that generate money, especially if you've been a worker. Yeah, it's a it's it's a struggle, and um, most of us have to change from change from a family that uh, you know of more of a, into the working class to a family now to where you have to be the person that's going to create the opportunities and create the, those uh, you know create those uh, jobs or create those companies. So. Uh, those of us that have access to this modern connection or whatever you're in America or Europe or just different parts of Africa, you just got to figure it out. Um, the Lebanese, the Chinese, the Indians, they're not going to feel sorry for you if you don't. Now, let me, ask, let me ask the brother a question, right? Now, mm -hmm. I was part of a Susu uh, until last year. You know, I got kicked out, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I made money, right? And this is how Susus work, right? You, you, the Susus where you can put like $500 in, right? And then after a certain amount of people come in, you get like a payout like uh, four thousand dollars, right? Yeah, you get and to move on. Feedback. You move on, right? Or you could uh, uh, do the thing where you take uh, 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 five hundred dollars, right? Or you could take let's say seven hundred dollars, right, and put it in, right? Your initial five hundred dollar payout goes in, but you have a two hundred dollar recurring. Let's say you get your payout, right, of twenty five hundred dollars, four thousand, three thousand, whatever it is, right? It automatically uh, takes out that initial five hundred dollars back out in, so you get a net of twenty five hundred dollars, right? And it keeps going, so long as people are coming in. Now, the susu that I was when we raised almost two million dollars within four months. That's black people uh, uh, money putting in the money, saying like, "So don't tell me black people money." Now, some people have susus where they have lotteries and stuff like that. You know, that's how to organize. What I'm seeing, like we did a show a couple of weeks ago about the rugged individualist, right? Why is everybody when they get to Africa an individual, a rugged individualist? You know, you know, it's not enough to wear dashiki and be and, and go to Africa. You can't be. You got to be more communal and and work together. That's what we're doing. I would like to see somebody put together a susu, you know, a susu, and basically that's basically money, people coming in, money and stuff like that. You making a few thousand dollars a month. You know, and and stuff like that. You can put, you have money. You have you have other investments, but you don't depend on that. But you have a susu. You got hundreds of people put, paying into it and whatnot, and then it keeps growing and everything like that. I've seen it done. It works. You know, it works. The susus work, and now that's called gifting, and then it's tax free money because it's it's given to as a gift. 
You know, I made, uh, I made, uh, I, I didn't even complete my susu, man. I made fifteen hundred dollars, man. I was like, yeah, that fifteen hundred dollars, like, whoa, that's the yeah, first you, time I. You made back. Time, your, he made back yeah. your own money, uh, but yeah. I, I, I put two, I put two hundred in, right, and I got fifteen hundred dollars back because I brought people in. Uh, you know, you, you know, made back some of your of your own money and things, uh, but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, just letting people know that uh, different forms of corporate economics, susus, and uh, you know, and investment clubs and things. But that what I'm saying is this, though, that's because I don't see nobody. I have yet to see one per group of people uh, that uh, diasporas do that. I, they got them in America. The Caribbeans do it, you know, and black people in America are getting into the susu thing, you know, and, and stuff like that. But I have yet yeah, to see. Like doing, there's people out there doing certain things. Like some of the, the things I've come up to, with, how we have gotten this business going for the last decade and a half, is this co different different level of corporate economics. Even if it's this, uh, you know, even if it's this, you know, putting your money together literally. Or just uh, you literally just flipping profits and things like that. Uh, we just have to fig figure out different ways to make these things work. And and you know, literally black corporate economics, whether it's susus yeah. or different aspects of things, it's an ideal way for us to build projects and make things happen and compete. But the, right. the hardest yeah. thing about that is now you have a group of people. So now the group of people have to be functional and get along, and things have to work. And then can they survive the the typical? you know brother and sister drama in in, in a black organization right and you've seen it whether it, whether it's your church whether it's your black power organization whether it's uh your your, your 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 small group your crew or whatever you want to call it or a group of people you got working for you what we have to do is what we have to do is stop the the gossip you know <laughs> <laughs> that is a problem it's hard to get people to stop running them out sometimes you tell people like yo when i was in you know, the navy wasn't all with this talking it's like you know, it's order structure you get your job done and things like that but it's like people just thinking that everybody wants to be involved, been right? running their mouth about other people business like i do certain things and next you know and sometimes i've had to just like take things on another level to where you already know the situation you know what i'm saying all eyes on you and all you know and and folks is instead of and for and sometimes we become destructive with it where we just run in our mouth too much and people like myself just dealing with so many people in business and so many people that i do things with i just had to just learn to just like deal with it and just realize that most of these folks you know, they just their life is just bored to where you know they just like your life is excited so they just feel like they just got to talk about you you know what i mean and things like that and it's uh, unfortunate that, you know, they're spending so much time doing that because that's not what the time is needed. The time is needed to bond with people and build. And if you can't be in that phase right there, just, I tell people stay out of people way, way. But it's not that simple because what people like to do more than anything else is just run their mouth and talk. And then everybody is a know-it-all and everybody think that they can they can be the, the – do you know most people that I've met that thought they can run my business better than me? Yeah. Brother, it is amazing. And I tell them – I will give you all of the tools. Go and do it. You know, because it's not about, you know, I'm not I'm not on this little cute little Woody Meyer stuff. You know what I'm saying? He's like a little that is like he's like a little cute little kid, you know, that you know, that everybody loves and things like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that person. I'm a serious hardcore business person. You know what I mean? Cause I'm a I'm a man's man and I gotta deal with, you know, I gotta deal with vultures. <coughs> and you gotta deal with haters and you gotta deal with a bunch of stuff, and you have to be strong. Mm -hmm. And um and it can't be just no 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 playing around. But you know, uh, our folks, um, brother, um, I'm telling them if they want this, you know, you gotta be willing to compete and fight for this. And mm -hmm. um, and it is, and stop looking for somebody that's gonna just you know, you know, be kissing your ass. Like when I do business with people, like whether if, even if we just doing a website, I'm doing it for you. It's like I don't know, <coughs> they ain't got no time to play games. Let's get this done. And let's be about our business. If we need to communicate, communicate. You know, uh, there's so many people that you're dealing with. They make excuses. Oh, I was busy. I was doing this. Brother, the amount of business I do, brother, I don't, all calls, information, communication, whoever I need to communicate with, it's done, it, it's done throughout the day. Why, why do I need to set meetings with you next week and next week and talk to you next week? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, it's just, it's so, it's like, if you're serious, you have to be some level of efficient. And it can't just be like, oh, this is going on. It's like all the reasons and excuses. So I'm one of them people when I'm doing things, and it's like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna challenge ourselves and take it to another level. You know, like there's people who have told me, 
over the years that we couldn't do this land stuff and we couldn't do this stuff and we shouldn't be worrying about doing all this stuff and th this shouldn't be your responsibility. I was like, you now sometimes you want to tell them to shut the hell up. I mean, and things, but you listen to them and you're like, okay, thank you, appreciate it. Because it's like, okay, it's easy to sit there and run your mouth off and tell me this. How about you go start a business? Mm -hmm. How about you go build something from the ground up? And how about you let me know how it works for you when you have to deal with real people who are the, the average people who are going to be real people when you're dealing with them. They're going to have their personalities. They're going to have the, the, this going on, that going on. And can you, you know, can you organize and can you handle them? And can you, you know, can you manage them and can you deal with them? Can you make it work? You know, like example, this business that I'm in, you have people who think that they can just do this business. And I'm always telling people, I'll help you and I'll, you know, and I'll lay out a certain foundation for you. I'll let our brother in, in, a, in a minute. But it's like, as soon as they try to do certain things, you know, they don't understand the test of time. Like I tell people, people like myself have been in this business over 16 years, you know, and you don't stay long in this business by not being able to deal with people and work with people and figure things out. The first thing with some people, the first thing they have an issue with people is that they just want to just, the, oh, I quit. I give up. I don't want to do this. Like, you know, there's people I've done land deals with where, and I'm like, yo, this, I was like, if no one is going to sit around and agree with you. And I'm definitely not going to sit around and agree with nobody every day, all day long. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you're about your business, you're about your business. But you can't sit around and just expect people just to sit around and kiss you, you know, kiss your ass and expect to get things done. And, um, and so those people realize that, you know, that after a while, no one's going to want to waste their time with you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and after a while, people like myself is going to move forward. Uh, so I tell people, if you want to do this together as a people, Give your best energy, best effort. And, uh, you know, you have issues with people, you sit down and talk with people. You have disagreement, you sit down and talk with people. Do you know what people have left uh, our Backstar community for simple things? And when I mean simple things is a simple, like, example, um, religious belief, cultural belief, political belief, and things like that. And I tell people, you're never going to find a bunch of people going to sit around and agree on everything. Mm -hmm. That's never the point. The point is, you know, our values, our culture, what, our end goal, and what we're we building, you know, all the things that matter, how we're going to come together, work together, mm -hmm. figure things out, you know. So I'm telling, and I'm telling all our people in these different organizations, because every time I turn around, like all these organizations that we know in Ghana that uh, that they were building communities, brother, I'm the last one left. Yeah. yeah. And always been, I've always been standing on a pinnacle. But it's like you end up just being the last one left because people get into things and next you know this drama, this problem, this thing, and then they don't know how to resolve issues and work on things and get things fixed and get things done. You know, you saw me this year, damage control. You know what I'm saying? Even proving, even proving the things to people that I shouldn't have to prove to them because everybody should automatically, you know, that's Bomani Tayemba. He's been out here taking out people to Africa, helping people live and do business in Africa for over a decade and a half. Give him the benefit of the doubt, but it don't work that way. You're guilty until proven innocent. No, no, you're always guilty until proven innocent. You and you and I are guilty right now, man. And, you know? and people like us, so we don't, we just enjoy proving people wrong anyway. So I tell mm -hmm. people, come at me with your best because I'm a military-minded person, and I'm gonna cover myself, and I'm gonna make sure that we're in a position to where we never lose. I'm a good brother. Yes, Bridgen, welcome to the show. Yes, my brother. You know yeah. who this, you know who this uh Bomani and brother, brother, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know God man, big up your brethren. Yes, light them, light them up. Yes, my brother, yes, and brother K what is how you pronounce the name? Call it, call, call it. Yeah, my brother. Uh -huh. So you know, sometime you know, you may we may say Oh, well, you know, we don't have a lot of people, especially for us nationalists. But I tell you the truth, we really don't need a lot of people, you know, especially when you're starting, when you're getting, when you're getting your stuff off the ground. Um, and I can tell you this from experience, from being in a third generation Garvey movement in Harlem with brother uh, Asam Nendisi Harris, the African nationalist pioneer movement, is confusion. <laughs> you have a lot of confusion 
when you have more than 10 black people in a room, you have confusion. Um, some of the people in the organization never read the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. Never read Race First by Tony Martin. So they don't even know what the hell they was in. You know what I'm saying? So we they got to go through our orientation. You know, but they just coming off the street. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm ready. You know, and that's what happened. We, we, you know, we, we do guys in Africa too. You know, them just come off of the street. Yeah, them, I'm ready to go down to Africa. But their mind that they carry, they still have that colonial mindset still taking with him. So we have a, we have a lot of work to do. And I doubt we're going to solve it here in America. I remember I was talking to the elder and I said, to the elder, I said, Ella, what you think, what you think going to happen? He said, look, it's two things going to happen. Is either this place gonna get destroyed, uh, Africa gonna get strong, and when and when we move, they go we grab some of them in Africa and they grab some of us here and we swap. That's it. You, you know, you so you I don't think we're gonna correct this problem here with these people in this environment. Cause again, I said that that little thing, that little passage. The aptitude of the Negro to disobey orders coming from himself. Garvey said, out of every 100 orders he gave, only 2%, 2 percent, two, they, they follow. So our people have serious psychological issues. And he said, only under a system of strict, rigid, civil authority and other means to straighten them out. Because if it was if it was something that we could straighten out by talking, we could have solved the problem already. Don't you guys agree? We could have solved this. <laughs> you know, yeah. because look how much talking have been done. So you need a little, you need that lead pipe brigade, you know, in the back to knock them in the head. So look, you, you, hey, you're going to go straight. Look, China, China never experienced what we experienced as far as, you know, chattel slavery. They had to kill 40 million Chinese and they didn't go through what we went through. So if we think we're going to go through this year, uh, circumspect, we got we, we to, gotta, you know, because what happened to all of our people? All of our leaders, they're, they're, they're running like the willabies. The, the, you know, oh, you know the, 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 the bootlicker chasing them. You know, you can't even go out in front, as, as you, you yourself said. You go out in front and stand up, yes, I'm, you know, come, charge this way. Them niggas shoot you in the back. <laughs> you see? So... We got to change the strategy. So look, we go get behind the Negro this time instead of getting in front of the Negro and tell the Negro, no, Negro, you're going to move forward now. You see, you're going to go forward because if you don't move forward, we got something here that's going to be worse than what the white man going to put on your backside. See, we're we going to have to adapt some of these principles that got our people in the condition they are in. To correct it, you see, we can, we can't use old kid gloves because what they do, they destroy, they destroy us. They destroy. Look what they did to Garvey. Destroyed him. All what you know, you know, other other prominent black people destroyed him. You know, Patrice Lumumba. Yeah, uh, you know. So we gonna have to change the strategy. We gonna change the You know, all this kumbaya. <coughs> That gang stop. And I like what the brother said about systems. You know, we need, as I say, we need systems. You know, I've heard our brother Mohammed, he was talking the other day. And he said, he said something, he said, look, if we were to take a penny, we could start with a penny. And you take that penny, and every day you double the penny. So Day one, it's one penny. Day two, it's two pennies. Day three, it's four pennies. Day four, it's eight pennies. And keep doing it like that. 
You know that in 30 days we could have five million dollars. Systems. Like, like, like corporate <laughs> economics, you know what I mean? So yes, so we need systems and we can do it. We can we can do it and that's just by a penny. You have to create Start all the systems yes. to make this movement work. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna have to do it. We ain't got no choice. We ain't got no choice. We in a position now, we ain't got no choice. Cause this place is crumbling. This US economy is crumbling, and you know, it may they may go to blows. Yeah, gonna, one, one thing I'm gonna say about uh, the, uh, these folks, uh, this, I just titled them these folks or these people, is um, they're gonna always fight for what they um, believe in. And, exactly. And, and, yeah. So exactly. what we have to do as a people, we just you know we just need to do what we need to build. Um, we tell them people that you know our, our brother Kala got all this wonderful connection in Liberia. Like you know, like where's our you know where's more of the energy supporting that uh, movement to build uh, modern Liberia and uh, build. These towns and these communities, and this, you know, straight up, just build, you know, build the industries that where we can just compete in as a people, and just you know, evolve. Uh, so, uh, you know, these are all opportunities on the table for people. I tell people, you know, we're in, we're, you know, we're engaged in some of these things, but it's not enough of us, and it's not enough of us working effectively. Even more important. Uh, so, I was in people know, hey, instead of all the talking and um, playing around on YouTube, join the fight, join the party, join the investment join the different operations that's going on and uh and you know put your money where your mouth is and just you know let's see what you, you're gonna do but uh nowadays it's, it's it's simple you can just get on youtube and call yourself the prince of pan-africanism and make promises to people for decades or for, <laughs> you know, for, for years i'm not I'm talking about anybody specifically but you know for me whoever the shoes fit wear it you know i don't really care about people and their emotions because i'm thinking about the future of our people about what we're going to be building because it's like we're fighting a losing battle in one position, uh, but then we have a, a great advantage right here on the African continent. Uh, but then again, some people don't believe in that that, that connection between you know, the, the African yeah. and African continent. But it's the, it's so needed, just like our Jap Japanese folks, Japanese people have their connection on the you know in Japan and everywhere else in the world. And I'm telling China people, got, you know, China, you got Hong it. Kong, Singapore, Taiwan. Uh, I mean, they even got. I mean, that's Malaysia's uh, Malaysia and Singapore is it part of their product, right? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. So you might as well say Singapore, that, Malaysia, Chinese. That, that, that's that's highly Chinese, Chinese, right? It's just yeah. they have a different political point of view, right? But they still make. They still got that Chinese mindset making the money. And that's my point to you, brother. And that's my point to people over and over. Even when you talk about this set, love this group of Indians and that group of Indians, you know, they got the untouchables. Mm -hmm. And people still maybe just just come at you like I'm like, okay, so you want me to sit down there and just talk about that situation? versus what we're talking about people who put their economic energy together and you know and are now dominating right. the world when they used to be the oppressed people and right. i mean we're probably the only oppressed people left out of the the, the, yeah, the every, you know, you know it's so bad i'm gonna add to that, add to that. <laughs> you have countries like vietnam that was once dirt poor got their own african poverty but, development program but who land, but who land, who land, you know, you know what we have to remember you know those people never go through the experience that we went through. Oh, absolutely. That's the first thing I'm always saying. So, is that, yes. No, no. Yes. Well, that's one thing I'm always saying to people that um, we we're not comparing our situation because our conditions completely yes. different. But what we talk about is what we talk about is just oppression, oppression as far as this dealing with the colonial devils. Yes. Yeah. Because because we, they never went through that. What we they were never dehumanized and taken out of the human family. You see, so so they have a different psychology, you know, and and history than us. You see, so a lot of people come and say, like, "Oh, well, why why black people can't get their shit together? Why you know?" Yeah, because we have a different history and 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 experience that give us a different psychology than these other people. But these if, things if, can also make us versus breaking us, you know. Yes, but remember to know is information change things too, you know, and you have to be open for information. You know? so a lot of our people are not open for information. So you see, they, they, they lock down, you know. But the, system again, already got, the system already got the man, you know. They've yes. been brainwashing them since they were children. <laughs> yeah, mine, yeah, but I still think, you know, we're going to rise to the occasion, you know, yeah. in spite of where you are, what we see. Because remember, you know, especially in America, we have been 
in oppression longer than we have been free. <laughs> the time span we've been in America, we have been under slavery a longer period than we actually out of slavery, right? I remember we came in 1619 to 1865. So from 1865 to now, so we we we're moving. It just we it, it ain't, we don't see it accelerating as fast as we we want to. But I think we're gonna get there, you know. And I think too, as Pan Africanists, because when I was in the movement, physically in the street doing it, you know what a lot of black people would tell me? Yeah, you're talking a lot of black shit, but you ain't got no money. <laughs> See, that's the first thing they said. Like, they they about... make sure the Pan Africans don't get the money. Yes, they said, nigga, you're talking about know, that black shit. Let me say this, brother. I was thinking today, man, because Bawani thinks I'm an angry black man and whatnot all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what he thinks. I was an angry black man. But I was still driving today, man. I had to pull over the side of the road. Jay Z is like talking about buying a billion. Uh, uh, he had, he says he has a billion dollars to buy some vodka or some whatever, mm -hmm. Bacardi, whatever. And he refused. I said, what is this nigga? This dude, drug dealer from freaking Brooklyn, doing that he may uh, uh, do a billion dollar deal. That's Pan Africa. We're doing all the things right. We're gonna say we're gonna build this for people, right? And all the people that's gonna benefit from Jay Z's business deal, just like P Diddy uh, is himself. Black mm -hmm. people ain't gonna benefit from what Jay Z's doing, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, if Jay Z gets a part of the NFL team. Anybody benefit from that from him? He's a part but, of the Brooklyn Nets. Ain't nobody benefit from that. But those are the people that oh, the white man always make sure they get on. Yes, because they're yeah. not speaking what we speak. Exactly. So he go make sure they he push them to the front. But if you get to the front now, you know, and you, you, you and those Negroes see you, those those same Negroes now, you know, they're gonna look and say, hmm, oh, Bomani, he doing good. He, uh, he driving this, oh, he do because that's what they, you see, that's what they gravitate to. They are, you know, mat modern materialism, you see? So when you get economic power, then now you can dictate to these Negroes. Say, look, all right, Negro, you ain't got to join the, uh, I'll give you a damn job, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. I'll, give you, I'll give you a job, okay? I got a job for you. And if I got a job for ESPN. I got a job for your ESPN. Yeah, if and if they don't do the job, we fire ass. Simple. So we ain't got it. We ain't got You ain't got to be no nationalist. Hey, I got a job for you. I need to do this, 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 this. Okay, you don't do it, you're fired. Next, come up. You know what I'm saying? That's what we got to do. Because if we waiting for these Negroes to get a, 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 the mind correct, uh-uh, they go, shit, we may be waiting another 200 years, brother. So, you know, we, we got to get that money. Oh, we what we're doing is uh, we're providing oh, leaders for the organization. Uh, we just expect people to follow. I'm just, I'm, I'm a straight uh, military exactly. person. Like that. I believe you just, you, you, you build an operation and then you just get people to follow. I mean, and, you know, uh, and not everybody is prepared to lead and not everybody know what they're leading. Uh, exactly. But, you know, our movement is, you know, is a, is a, sim is a simple is connection. And, you know, we've been building it from the grassroots and Yes. I'm going to make one. Yeah, Open your yeah. mind to come to Africa, uh, travel, connect, and when you come, don't be on some stuff like I'm coming to Africa and I don't want to be dealing with no African Americans. I've you know I heard people say crazy stuff like that. Wow. I was like, you gotta stick with your folks and stick with your folks. So you know, and everybody's your, your folks and your people. So you know, you have to just get the right ones and them together. Uh, yeah, my and, brother, my brother Chris says I do. Uh, uh, he says he had a um. Uh, it says, uh, it says, I, 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 we tried to sue in Atlanta, but people wasn't committed to it. Yeah, I see that, man. Black people, you know why? Social media and gossip. You know, when people start saying stuff, when you start seeing somebody, you know, you know, and it really tells you what we're all about, right? The white man gave us social media, right? He know we ain't going to do nothing but sit around gossip. We ain't going to educate our people with use this powerful medium of social media. He give us all the tools. Hey, look, well, I'm going to put it right in front of them. <laughs> you know, the ability to do su -su -su, everything, and the Negroes ain't gonna do nothing with it, yo. Know? <laughs> that's so. That's why. That's why. That's why I say, the only when you say I want a nation of my own, right? A nation. Mm -hmm. Africa saying we're gonna rebuild Africa. We're gonna build Africa. I want a nation of my own. Then you know you're serious. Why? Because you know uh, for that you uh, the, the that's the only thing that requires you to work with black people and only black people for the most part, right? Everything else, you know, you can fall back on the white man system. You can work with them like it. it, it 
That's why I said all these nationalist movements, right? If the end game isn't a sovereignty of our own, or yeah. us, us in the diaspora having our own towns and, and cities and states on the African continent, it's not it doesn't mean anything. Why? Because long as you, Michael Mech said this, he said, if any movement for liberation of black people based solely in the United States is doing the fail. And he was right about that. He says, as long as you're inside of America, right, black people are going to backslide. They're going to go to the club. They're going to go out here. They're going to get with their white friends. They're going to get with their white chicks on the side. You know, it's all they. But when you say, look, we want a black African nation, you know, we want to build Africa. You know, we want to see our flags, uh, the red, black, and green, fly on African soil finally, you know. And we want to do all this stuff, right? And we want our own governments. We want our administration. We want our military. We want all stuff like this. When you, when that burns in your heart, right, then what, uh, what, uh, what, what thing is, you're going to get with people that you may have disagreement with. That's why I, I sicked out Bomani. Bomani and I had disagreements over the years, right? Mm -hmm. But I want this so bad. Right, and even though I love brother Mike, my brother, you know, it's not like that. I'm saying like that. I'm saying that no matter what type of differences I might have with somebody, if I know somebody is serious about this movement, and Bomani to me is the only person that I reach to. Right, said man, I need somebody strong that I can connect with. Right, I looked over around YouTube, I looked around internet, and I'm seeing people they mean well, but I said to make this Africa and this thing work, I need the best. And there you, know? you go, Liberia, right there. Yeah. And I said, I had to get with Bomani Tayamba. Why? Because he is about building in Africa. You know, he's trying to test. I said, this is a man I need to work with. You know, everybody else can come along. But I said, this man, Brother Bomani, is the man that's going to make Bomani sure we're going to do it. You know, and we're going to build yeah. these communities all throughout Africa. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Look at, that, look at that start right there. A nice introduction to Liberia. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's gonna happen. It's gonna. It's gonna happen because, as I said, we got to remember again. As I said, you know, this Pan Africanism is 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 just a recent phenomena. So when we when this really Pan Africanism take life, especially in Africa, they never again will they oppress we. Once we once we pass this stage here and get to. Pan-Africanism, where it spread to Africa, where Africa stands as one, one army, one navy, one air force, one marines, one currency, mm. one political system, and nobody will ever again come and try to enslave black people. I, I guarantee you that. But we're going to have to go through this experience. We're going to have to go through this surgery that we're going through. But we're going to come out on top, you know, because just that, that's just the type of people we are, you know. Anyway, good brothers, it's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, great, great, great discussion. Don't be a stranger. No. We do a show yes. on Tuesdays and Saturday nights, you know. All right. I'll Spread definitely. Spread it. Tell, tell everybody about it. We need Pan-Africanists here. Pan-Africanists. Pan Pan yes, our parish. One love, brother. Take our care. Brother, brother, peace. And there you go, family. And that is us set for Liberia. So as we talk about uh, what Carlos was talking about, um, I was like, Scott, I was like, where's all these people that I uh, you know over the years? Uh, um, you know, what's their program to get us connected to Liberia? And this is my program. I always tell people, that's how we do things. We do things through the process of Africa tours and investments. Uh, just you know, opening your mind to all aspects of this. Enjoying a beautiful uh, uh, Roots and Culture tour. Uh, to this uh, being connected to investment and future opportunities. Um, Yo, and, bro, I, you know, I believe Liberia is going to really set something off for this movement, right? It's, gonna, it's, a, it's a country that says yes. Well, other countries may say maybe, I'll think about it. That's a country when you come there and when you want to build, but the brother was saying, uh, dealing with African Americans, like Liberia is a type of country. You could build with Liberians, right? Because there's a lot of Liberians back in America. So it's just like you're dealing with Black African Americans, you know? Because almost every Liberia has somebody in America mm -hmm. that's living in the United States, you know, for the most part. And the way Gray Africa was telling me, he said the Liberians that live in America are do, do better, way better than the Liberians that went to the UK, any other place, but because of what they have, because of Black America, you know, because, because of the connection they have with Black America. Makes sense. Makes sense. And, and so, so what he's saying, man, he said, man, there's so much economic opportunity 
for people over in Liberia, you know, and just freedom and stuff like that to establish ourselves, establish your organization, you know, whatever you want to do, your nonprofit, you know, your business and everything. And then you could branch out to other African countries. I do believe we need that base to basically be strong. You know, that's why we're opening up an office in Liberia for the Black African Infrastructure Organization, the Black Association of African Americans of Liberia. We're going to basically build Liberia as that place where, you know, it's a historical link between the West and the diaspora and the continent. That's where Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela, Patrice Lumumba, uh, uh, Siko, uh, 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 Siko Torre, Amika Kabar, all these statesmen, uh, uh, post World War II came to get to learn about the modern statesmanship and modern government in Liberia, right? Liberia was the elder country in the continent, the Western one, like that. The, I'm gonna tell us, I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna let something in on you right now, but people don't know. Do you know that there's even talk, right? They're making Liberia the administrative capital for the whole entire continent continent all these post-revolutionary people wanted to make liberia monrovia uh because it's so well developed and so internationally connected the big the, the administrative capital so liberia would have had a friggin' empire stretching all across the continent but the powers that be didn't want that to happen you know that's why they dug down deep the french and all oh that's not gonna happen the british not gonna happen and so that's why liberia is always seen as a threat now, that thing lasted until like the 70s, right? And then Liberia said, okay, the only way we're going to be able to do this, make Liberia this, this capital with the, the final OAU conference of 1979, was Liberia had to open relationships with the Soviet Union, Libya, Russia, and China, the sign agreement. That was Liberia's downfall. That's when the U.S. and Israel and all those people plotted uh, the 1980 coup. And then they tried to make it seem like it was all about the indigenous people rising up. It was a lie. Same thing would happen with Adele in uh, at Chile, and they brought in Pinochet. Pinochet was Samuel Doe was uh, was a Liberian version of Pinochet, and it, it, American government basically put sanctions and and tried to sabotage uh, uh, the Adele government in, in, in Argentina, and then they brought Pinochet in. Pinochet was his right hand man, military man. And the United States government backed Pinochet. They did this all over, you know, all over the world. They basically, the CIA, and let me tell you something, folks, when you talk about uh, uh, what the CIA is. The CIA means Central Intelligence Agency, okay? Now, I want people that listen to the show, that's going to listen to the show, understand what that means. You know what intelligence means? Intelligence means not your internet gossip or what you think you find with, with people pulling something out of your ass, you know? You know what intelligent means? That means that the stuff you have in your hand is 99.99% accurate. So when they have a country, right, they know who the student groups are, who the radicals are, who, or who they sleep with, what they do. Every last single country has a profile. This is a guy that we need to make contact with. This is a guy that doesn't like the guy that's in power right now. If this guy gets out of line, we can get this guy in here bring them in and like that, you know, train them, whatever like that, to be ready when the time comes that, like this, coups do not just happen overnight. They're planned and they're cultivated for, for years. So when time comes, it's time to remove this person from power. Now, the CIA failed against Singapore and it failed against Cuba. There was 27 assassination attempts on Fidel Castro, okay? They all failed. Why? Because he basically knew how to do counterintelligence and whatnot. He put people in jail, political, so-called political prisons. They were really people who were trying to usurp power for themselves. And that's what they do. They basically understand these cultures, countries are vulnerable. So they basically, oh, this guy's a bad guy. We need to remove him. And the American public goes along with, oh, yeah, he's a bad guy. He's a dictator or whatever. They did that with Manuel Noriega. Whoever it was, as soon as you get out of line, they remove you from power, then put somebody in that they could they they find agreeable. You know, the good thing about Angola was and Portuguese were very weak, and so they failed in Angola because Angola fought the fought the West for decades in Angola. And Angola is a free country right now. You know, so that's another uh, um, country on our photo uh, bucket list to build in. You know, Liberia was never colonized like Great Africa was saying tonight. 
never colonized. You don't have European. Liberia has so much mineral wealth and so much farmland that's untouched by Europeans. Look what look, look, look what the Africans in Zimbabwe are going through right now. They're under sanctions, even though they've given a lot of land back to the whites. The whites don't even belong there. The Southern Africa, uh, you got white farmers in South Africa, is retarding the African uh, race. You cannot have an African state and have white people, Europeans, and everybody living inside your country like that as a sovereign inside your country. Now, South Africa, in that regard, may be a lost cause. You know, you can't uproot five million white people or whatever. Like, it never happened, you know. But what we can make sure that this does not happen to a country like Liberia. It does not happen to Angola and these other places that I call uh, free African soil or African territory or Ghana, anything like that. We have That's why we have to be the ones that are coming and building farming and industries and all the stuff like that that the continent needs. We have to be the ones. We have to build the infrastructure. We have to plug our cities that we live in, right? Assistant city projects. We're in Virginia Beach, the Filipinos got millions and millions of dollars and all kinds of resources that pummel to the Philippines, to their home villages and cities in the Philippines. The Filipino population is nowhere near the black population here. Where does the black population have an outlet? This is what I was trying to say before. The black people do not have an outlet. If we had an outlet of, of countries, of our own everything, do you think we would be interested in a gangster lifestyle in America? No. That's why I always praise all the brother, young brothers who are going to the African continent. Even though you may not be doing stuff and everything like that, up to the far and everything, but the fact that it matters your minds on Africa, I commend you. Okay? Because right now in America is, uh, there's nothing. The only time they need you is every four years with an election. Rothbard, Rothbard more not won against Herschel Walker. Slim margin, but he won. But that's what they were. Now, you won't hear from black, uh, the media won't be talking to black people for the next two years. Why? Because of election time. We only need you niggas to go out the vote or we'll see what you're trying to do, whatever. Now, black people are going to be uh, neglected and uh, dismissed for the next two years. Well, uh, is it, does it really work like that? <laughs> exactly how it works, you know? Only thing we'll be talking about for the next two years is sports and Will Smith and Kanye and all this kind of stuff like that, you know? Because politics, that. Ah, Politics is over, so we don't care what y'all niggas think. You know, you know, the only time they need just like a, a female, right? If you're a female, listen to this, right? And the only time a dude comes over, right, when he wants to stick his dick in you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm telling you, he doesn't love you. He just basically uses you. It's the same thing with the black people in America. The only time when they talk to black people, right, is when they want to bend us over and stick it with us, you know. Every two years, they say, "Oh, after they get their uh, their their rocks off, they, the wham is always what is it called wham bam, thank you, ma'am." You know. <coughs> yes, brother. Uh, yes, brother. Good one. Good one. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. When, when the next election comes around, oh, they'll be doing the same thing. Where y'all gonna vote? Where y'all gonna vote? Everything. With this election, black people didn't even show up. That's why Republicans took the house. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't show up. We like fuck it, man. So what the hell we fuck, fuck, fuck. We was getting smart. Don't don't anybody remember that video where women was telling the uh, son in the back, ah, blah, 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 blah. yo, you you better get out there and vote. We're not, you know, you know, and the hippopotamus still lost, you know, <laughs> you know. We gotta vote for the hippopotamus, you know. She gotta get out there and vote. What for? What she promised? Man, she hates black men. She says she uh, 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 illegal aliens, Mexicans are her favorite people. You know, what, so what, what, what hippopotamus? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hippopotamus. They got mad jokes. They got mad jokes. Man. Yeah, yeah, the hippopotamus that ran for election in uh, which we call it in Georgia. The black <laughs> men is the problem, or not? Any the black men? What she's talking about is the black men didn't show up to vote at all. Because a black man did show up with 84% voted for her, you know? And then there was like you know, what, half the black male population show up to vote, you know? So basically what, what they're saying is, you know, they're going to end up coming to your house for money at gunpoint and uh, bringing you to the polls, you know? That's what's coming down to next. Because we're not free. 
if you if you can say I don't want to vote or whatever, I'm gonna stay home, whatnot, and you can't respect that, you know, I gotta get out there and vote. Man, what the hell are you talking about? You know, you're just yeah. a slave. And what was the actual? Well, how dare you even ask when you get out? Like a slave, a slave say you nigga got to pick that cotton. Well, where do I get out of it? What? You won't get your ass whooped. <laughs> That's where we are now. You ask, well, what, what, what do we get for our vote? What are we voting for? Don't do that. You just get out there and vote. <laughs> you know, and that's what that's where we're at. We're back to slavery. You know, I said in the earlier show, the black male in the community is not respected. Black females are exalted. Black ratchet chicks are exalted. Big black women are exalted and whatnot. Lizzo and whatnot. You know, they're elevating the mammy. You know, in uh black culture again. You know, we're going back. We're going backwards, man. You know, we we said remember. Uh, 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 groups like En Vogue, uh, back in the day, SWV, fine ass black group, girls groups, whatnot, TLC. Remember that the nineties? What the hell happened, man? Now we got Lizzo up there shaking a big stinking ass, you know? Yo, it's all lost in America, man. They're not gonna let you. Yeah, yo, y'all happy? Black men are happy? You're, you're happy? You got beautiful women that you're looking at? Yo, you can't have that, you know? We used to have nice R and B music, nice hip hop, and everything like that, man. All that's gone. Now ghetto ratchet culture is the order of the day. No political uh, uh, power, no nothing. You just sit back and uh, and uh, just get out there like a fool. And I'm saying about this, right? Earlier tonight, right? I was sitting there in a restaurant, and I'm and, I, and it's a sports bar. It has like all these screens, TV, right? Now it was a ESPN on, right? Uh, ESPN is a uh, think a tool of the devil, right? I'm looking at this thing like this black guy up there when I talking about his son and whatnot. I was like, man, I'm trying to eat a meal. I'm looking at this nigga up there talking about, yeah, my son when he plays pro ball and whatnot. And it's like white co hosts and they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, is that so important? You know, who cares about your son playing football? But that's what they got us distracted with. You know, these idiots that's on uh, ESPN, uh, 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 Shannon Sharp and Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley and all these other buffoons up there talking about sports. 24 hours a day and whatnot, and people are like, oh, yeah, the game or not, yo, who's going to win? Who the fuck cares? Is that so important? You know, I don't give a fuck about Deion Sanders when he goes to now. Oh, Kyle, yeah, look, I wish he would stay in Jackson State, whatever, but if the black millionaires that's talking all the shit can't come up with a few million dollars to put into Jackson, Mississippi, what else can you do? Ain't no black person, millionaires, uh, come to the rescue of these black schools. Nothing. Nothing. nothing I got to go Michael George worth a billion dollars. Did he donate any money to the, the sports program, whatever? No. You know? And so this is what we have. But this is what we're talking about, right? Instead of us talking about nation building and building with Africa and whatnot, they flood the news, uh, the, the, the thing. I thought when we had the internet, we'd be talking about other things besides sports and and who who's screwing who and everything like that. I thought we had different conversations. But it seems like the people that that that, that got our attention on YouTube, they're talking about the same stupid shit that we see in the mainstream media. So what do I freaking need YouTube for if all I'm gonna hear is the same stupid shit I'm gonna hear on CBS, NBC, Fox Sports, everything like that, and all the gossip and nonsense and everything. These platforms should be used for talking about nation building and pan Africanism. That's what I believe. I don't want to talk about uh, fucking uh, what's the what's the latest topic of the day? Kanye and uh, and uh, uh, the Kardashians and all this kind of stupid stuff. Or that that's not anybody in a pan African movement. Don't do that. You know, I know. Don't I know the temptation of getting clicks, likes, and views. And, you know, super chats is there, whatnot, but you know, and I don't know, you make your money. You know what I'm saying, make your money. But don't expect me to freaking take you seriously if basically we have no shows talking about the the West trying to stop Uganda from building a pipeline through Tanzania. I mean, come on, brother, what kind of real pan African folks sit around and talk about uh Kyrie and Kanye and this. Uh, I, I don't like, get it. I don't, I don't, I don't know who Kyrie Irving is. We, we, we got work to do. Most of between the, throughout the daytime, we got work to do. And things, but I'm saying Kyrie, we got we got, got grown ass men. Literally yeah, I, know who Ky, I know who Kanye is. About, I that, right? 
other men downfall and struggles and stuff like that instead of organizing and building something for the future. Why, of our why, people, why is it like to you move. made a video, whatever, like that? But like, and, and that was like the number one thing Kyrie Irving getting back into the NBA. Who the fuck cares? He's worth millions of dollars. You know, if he never played a shot in other basketball, like, I don't think he, you know, you know what I'm saying? Why do you care? <laughs> Kyle, I don't yo, fucking care. Kyle, <laughs> I color you on fire tonight, brother. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, but maybe, maybe it's me. Am I getting older? Am I just weird? Am I crazy? I'm just an angry black man, you know? I'm just, I'm the angry. Now, just like you saw about you at the sports bar. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was having, a, I had a meal, right? I said, I got something for a meal. I didn't want to look at the screen. And I'm saying this ESPN stupid nonsense on and whatnot, talking about, oh, yeah. This, I don't give a damn about the Super Bowl. I don't give a damn about none of that. You know, I'm completely divorced from American culture, you know? Yeah, yeah. people probably got a lot to say about you on that one. But uh, absolutely, I'm with you on that, on, on that 100% because it is distraction. And Yo, the, Ro the Romans mastered this so, thing, right? So they would, that, have, the uh, they would right. have the people talking about the gladiator fights and all stuff like that. While they're basically ruling the world right now, they're basically <laughs> taking away all your rights up on top, passing laws and everything, getting ready to take away all your rights and everything. You don't even see it coming because you're focused on what Kyrie fucking Irving's on, you know? The Romans do that. They used to have gladiators, fights, and everything like that to distract the public, you know? While they're raping the That's treasury true. and uh, sending people off to war and all this kind of stuff like this, you know? While people were distracted by these freaking Coliseum games. It's a old it's a distract. Sports and all that is nothing but a damn distraction. You know? <coughs> it's like, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. I'm just a nigga and a dumb freaking moron. I don't even know whatever going on. Ball game. Take me to the game. One, two, three, all ball game. I mean, who the fuck cares? You know, I watch basketball and football and baseball and passing like that That's it does true. not matter to me who wins who lose i don't give a damn about none of this stuff it's all a freaking distraction and that's how you know you're a real nationalist right when you get pissed off by by distraction you know i mean the the, the number one thing if i talk about look okay i want to talk about what's going on in the camera room right now people are getting slaughtered by this guy bia who's been there for 40 years by the french and everything and english-speaking camera room which could be another homeland for us right uh, could be another home. I got an Amazonian group in, in the Ning site, you know, the Amazonian got a couple members. So and they're like, yeah, man, we want the support of black America, you know, but no one's talking about that. You're talking yeah. about Kyrie Irving. You're talking about Kanye and all stuff. Yeah, right get him, Kyle, you know, get him. Nothing was going on in the camera with a genocide going on. You don't care about that. There's a, there's a, there's a five nation war brewing in the Congo right now. Does anybody know about that? No. You know, but what you want to do is talk about all this freaking nonsense. And I'm tired of it, you know. I need the Pan-Africanists, the people called so pan african start talking about what's going on in the continent. Because if we miss this opportunity and everything like that, well, like that, we need the, the world, our brother, voice right here. Brother, they, they're cloud chasing. Hmm? So this is what we need to be talking about, you know. What's hey, we want to talk about the, the hottest subjects in... And get, the and bottom get, line is, if you think that, that they're just going to let us do this thing in Liberia and Angola without a fight, you are sadly missing. You don't know these people, you know? <laughs> you don't know these people, you know? I'm geared up for the fight of my life, you know? You know, the bottom line is this. And I'm gr grateful for the fact that I got so many Liberians on the ground, right? They get it, you know? You know, they, when you, I talk to these young African brothers, Liberian, they're really about the education, nation building and stuff like that these guys in their 20s when i was in liberia I had guys in their 20s with their families running businesses running complex businesses and some of everything they come back to america what do you see young brothers doing doing fucking nothing you know <laughs> running around with their pants sagging now wow. freaking shooting each other and all this kind of nonsense you know and so therefore like i said and uh, what's on uh, what, what are they worried about oh who's who's playing tonight what game's on you know you know, uh, what, what, uh, uh, college draft and all this kind of freaking nonsense and everything, all this foolishness. If you're about foolishness, man, you got to leave the Pan-African world alone because we need people that's going to talk about the stuff that's really going on on the continent, you know, all the time. 90% of what you, we talk about should be what's going on in the continent, 
well, how's that relevant to us and everything? It is relevant to us, you know. When you see wars going on, the president of Equatorial Guinea, a corrupt dictator, you know, just elected himself president. He got elected president again, right, for the sixth term. Been there for like 30 something years and everything. The country, he his country is like his own bank account. But we say nothing about that, you know. We should be protesting in front of his embassy in the United States. We should let these people know that we're here. I wouldn't have one of these stupid African Americans who just basically kiss African ass. No, you got corrupt leaders and one that puppets of the West. We're gonna expose you. We're gonna make it hell for you in America. Okay, that's what we can do. And I need people that's that's oh, that's with me on this. You're a corrupt leader, that you ain't doing nothing for the people. You're not helping the cause of Pan Africa. You ain't welcome in the United States. We don't care what damn what you have with the United States government. We're gonna make your life hell in America. How about that? We're gonna turn American politicians against you. We're gonna put our vote against you. We're gonna help put sanctions on you. That's a new Pan Africans war coming brewing. Because I'm tired of playing games. You know, I ain't gonna say much about George Ware, but you know, I can say all I can say is uh. We do got some connections, so I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone. But I'm, I'm disappointed. 45 days out of the country. It's you know, the World Cup. It's the World Cup. For a fucking World Cup. Everybody's talking about the World Cup. That's another thing people talk about. The World Cup. But I don't give a damn. You know? The World Cup. You know, somebody's eliminated. You know, all of a sudden, like, who the fuck cares? The country doesn't have infrastructure. You got people swimming in the, uh, uh, the ocean trying to get into Europe. You got Cameroonians on their way to Brazil to get into the United States. You got Congolese in Argentina making their way up to, to the United States right now. The Congo, the richest region in the on the friggin' planet. Why do you got people leave uh, uh, at refugees? This is stuff we need to talk about. And those of us who care, who really care about Africa, when we have the chance and we have a lot of birth we're going to keep talking about this. Those who are really serious about this nation building, this is what we're going to talk about. This is what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about what's going on in South Africa, you know, how some Indians can kill a black man, right, and whip upside, how does a little Indian can whip upside a black man and, uh, and intimidate a whole thing in Shaka Zulu's homeland. How the hell does that happen? Those are the things that bother me. Kyrie Irving and all that shit like that don't bother me. You know, Kanye doesn't. I'm sorry, I don't care about Kanye. But I am caring about what's going on in the African continent. I care about what's going on in Haiti. You know, how uh, 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 it's just a mess. The whole black world is a freaking mess. And the reason why it's a mess is because when we do have people who have influence and everything, they're not speaking anything that's relevant to bettering us as a race. All they speak about is foolishness, entertainment, sports. You know, Kyle, you sound like a hater. I don't care what damn what you tell me. Or call me a hater. Okay, Kyle's a hater. So what? But I do know this. You're not really interested in building everything. Just say so. But I know we, we there's not much we can do, but we can. What we can do is when people listen to these shows, that, that uh, Pan-African show, the Black National shows, they should hear the anger in us. And when they hear that and whatnot, it will, catch, it, will, it will cause an inferno and something will start burning. But when they basically turn on the Pan-African world, Everything we talk about stupid shit. Uh oh, these niggas. You know, you know the white man right now is all over the world. He's in Africa, trying to lock down the the coltane, the cobalt, and all the stuff like that. Hunter Biden and everything like that. <clears throat> why? Why are you sitting there uh, uh, on fucking uh, on Instagram and all stupid stuff talking nonsense when you basically uh, have John Kerry? Uh, we probably we didn't know this until I got put that video out. Go in there trying to block uh, Uganda from building that pipeline and uh, from thing that's going to basically industrialize that whole region 
and develop it and whatnot. You got people fighting tooth and nails to stop that. See, let me tell you something what the difference is, right? And I think Big Black was on, uh, uh, Big Black was on, and I didn't quite explain something like this. <clears throat> this is a difference than the oil in Nigeria. The oil in Nigeria is by European countries literally is sitting up there and sucking the oil out the ground. Nigerians are not producing that. The foreign companies do. And they may have some Nigerian partnership here and everything like that. But for the most part, the macro of it is Europeans, British Petroleum, uh, Exxon, Shell, sucking oil out or not and say, hey, this is what we took. This is going to be an African country producing the oil and refining it, building substations and everything like that along the way, refining to natural gas and different products, and <coughs> also building petrochemical energy. Why do we need petrochemical energy, Colin? Well, don't you have a house? Yes. Don't your house have paint? Yes. Don't you know paint comes from petrochemicals, which comes from oil and everything? There's hundreds of products made from them. So Africa is going to be able to make their own paints, their own all kinds of chemicals and stuff like that, you know, that they need domestically and then the excess, they export. They're not making it. The producing stuff to ship over there. They're basically producing the stuff, finished added value product, right? To use for themselves to build their own industries, right? And then as they grow, they get they can look out and they say they can export natural gas to Europe and everything for a position of power. They're exporting it, not European companies and everything coming in, sucking it out and giving the, the government a paycheck. They're exporting, they're marketing that product. That's a game changer. That's an industrial revolution in our lifetime in Africa. So therefore, we should be on the same page with that. But no one's talking about this. No one's talking about this. No one's talking about this, how the West is uh, doing this, because they skillfully take make sure it doesn't get on so, certain social media sites. Because if we started talking about it, Let's say Phil, the Ask Him the Diaspora channel uh, picks it up and everything. Because what it is, is they got a lot of black people bought into this so-called environmental stuff. Now, if a president like Museveni says, look, this is what we need to do. You know, I know what we need to do. I know what the, uh, how we need to uh, uh, do this and everything. This is good for our country. We have to give these people, our uh, leaders, the, uh, the benefit of the doubt. And say, President Museveni, uh, you say this is good. Some people say the environment, and these is the same usual suspect, the white savior types that are, they get these gullible, silly Africans uh, that live in the diaspora. Oh, Museveni is going to do this. Only a few people going to benefit from this and everything. So, you know, it's just the same thing. It, same thing they do with, with Paul Kagame. Paul Kagame, you got Western people who want Paul Kagame gone because he's showing a new model of development. But instead of us getting behind Paul Kagame, Museveni, all these people are doing good on the continent, the East African community and everything like that, East African community, instead of us getting behind that and saying, yeah, look, let's, let's, uh, uh, let's be the mouthpiece. Let's, let's build an a, a echo chamber in America. So when they put their hands on uh, stuff, us, when our leaders, they're coming for us. When they come, when they do their, uh, when, when like in Paris, they had this big thing where these, all these white people out there stopped the pipeline. I'm like, all these white people in Paris talking about a pipeline in Africa. That's the nerve. But I'll tell you one thing. If we find out they're doing it in America, I call that us, we're going to have a rally, a counter rally, right? We're going to have our signs, leave Africa alone, right? And then we might have some batons in our head, some clubbing some people upside the head. To get the message across that you're not going to freaking tell us what to do with our mother continent. If we say it's time for to us for the development and industrialization that we're showing about tonight, we're going to do it. Yeah, we're going to be environmentally and you know, stuff like that. We understand that. But progress waits for nobody. And so you got these people out here now. They're so terrified of Africa developing. They got Negroes up here talking about, oh, we need to go back to living in cuts and not developing and stuff like this. That's what's going on. And you think you don't understand the only the, the climate change and, uh, and global warming didn't start, didn't come about until 
to post World War II, when you had Asian and African countries start developing. Just suddenly, oh, the population in the world, you know, oh, <coughs> the, what's, these cities around the world are growing too big and everything. No, because Europe is dying. The biggest cities in the world are not white cities anymore. And suddenly there's pollution. But there was no pollution when they were freaking uh, developing New York and Amsterdam and all these other places like that. But suddenly, now you want to be concerned about the environment. I'm just trying to tell you, folks, just start thinking. They said, oh, if we do all this, right, they have this thing called the climate uh, green credit, right? I had a Liberian, an African-American guy in Liberia, right? And my boy Sam was like, oh, we about the green credit? I said, it's bullshit. What they're saying is, telling Liberia is, don't cut down any trees. Even though I do think uh, 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 logging should be regulated, right? But here's the thing. Do you know Israel planted hundreds of millions of little tiny seed trees in the Nevada desert and created a whole new forest? So even if you take out trees, right, you could replace them, take the buds of the trees, right, and replace them 10 times for every tree you take down, you could replace. And with five years, those trees grow. But they don't want to talk about that. They just don't want Liberia getting into the lumber industry of themselves. Now I saw this thing where they take these 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 little things, they're like in little balls, like little plastic balls, right? The tree bulbs, and they drop them from the air. They air drop them, and when the force hits the soil, it goes into the soil, right? Like millions of them. After the rainy season, everything like two rainy seasons went out, the trees are like ten feet tall. All this is called permaculture. Permaculture is the answer to the, 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 the Sahara Desert creeping south, there's Kalahari. The Kalahari is estimated that there's hundreds of billions of cubic feet of water in the Kalahari Desert. There's enough water in the Great uh, uh, Lakes region and the Great Rivers region of Africa, right, to green the Sahara Desert. Libya showed you, Gaddafi showed you when he built aqueduct, modern aqueduct out of the desert, right, and greened the desert. These are the type of conversations we should be having as people who are intelligent. This idea of climate change, everything like that. Why are you living in the West? Africa is not developing. You're worrying about climate change. And then they said, if we do all this right now, we're going to, uh, in, in 50, in 20 years, they talk about 20 years, they're going to reduce the world's average temperature by one half a percent. So you're doing all this, telling Africa not to develop, to reduce the world uh, climate by one one half a degrees celsius something like that see how stupid this sounds and the green credit is uh uh just like the uh, the climate credit like africans signed that paris accord in 2014 which was stupid now i think a lot of african countries are, are backing out of that you know they're saying well stupid we haven't developed the western country was supposed to come with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of aid to help develop africa by, by tell Africa to stop drilling for oil, stop doing coal, stop doing all stuff like this, right? And we're like this. And what happens is Africa, 80% of Africa's uh, energy comes from nat from renewable, which is not sustainable to building industries. Most of the continent still is without stable electricity. You can't be able to say, well, we, we did hundreds of years without electricity. No. So the rest of the world should have electricity. You got countries like backward countries like Myanmar and like are now thriving because they use like the, the hydro to produce electricity. Now they're building industries because you need in, uh, electricity is essential to building industries. The more industries you build, the less you have to import. The less you have to import, the the uh, the, the looser your the devaluation of your currency. That means there's more of your currency spread around. But we don't want to listen to a reason and logic and everything we want to listen to emotion so we bought into the climate change uh, alarmist nonsense and everything which is going to keep us backwards but the president of congo says i i'm done with that and all these other countries say follow suit we don't care about your climate change nonsense and everything and we realize now climate change is just a hoax to keep black people and black people uh 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 thing
Yeah, I heard of 5,000 African Americans. It's not just African Americans, 5,000 diasporans. That means I would say half of those are African Americans, half from the Caribbean, some from the UK, and stuff like that. So it's about 5,000 people, you know, and stuff like that that live in Ghana. You know, but uh, uh, it's, you know, some people want to go there and do their own thing. Black people are rugged individuals. You know, rugged individualism is I do my own thing and leave me alone, everything, you know. So this idea, uh, uh, we, we like to say, oh, we're African. We, I want to blend back into the culture and all stuff like that and everything. But when it comes down to it, we're very rugged individuals. And the most uh, people who are most rugged individuals are the so-called conscious people. You know, why? Why is the reason why? Because everybody is all, all down for the cause until it comes down to money. Everybody's like, I ain't giving you money. I ain't giving that nigga my money. You know, then the individuality comes out. It's all good when we're sitting down talking. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're one people, one God, one day, one aim, one destiny. Until the time we come out and pull out that checkbook. Yeah, oh, we, we, yeah. Yeah, 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 miss me on that. I, 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 I hear you, man, but I, I hear you. I, 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 I. That's the problem. We haven't built a culture of basically a nation building. With nation building, you have an end game, an end goal. You know, end goal. You know, so. So. Building communities in Africa, building industries, building commerce, and building uh, infrastructure and stuff like that where we can go to and from, you know, that's the goal. That's the goal. And if that's not the goal, then we're just wasting our time. Because the day when we could basically live on the continent and have all the things that, that we have. Now, I believe in modern modern modernism but i also believe in modesty in other words basically it's like this if uh if i want to build a city state right i know we're not going to build a highway so i can have my jaguar out and everybody like that but i would like to live in a modern world so what we do we build monorail systems you build street cars we build good public transportation. And then if you have a car, that's okay. But you notice how most Asian countries are like that. If you want to build, uh, how about expanding vertically? That means uh, within a square mile, you could have more people living in high-rise apartments than you do if everybody had their own house. So that's another thing we got to explore, expanding vertically. The use of uh, 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 monorail systems and, and, and uh, light rail and stuff like that as a means of transportation, as opposed to cars. No, but I would say make that available. But you know, you still can't. You still gonna need cars, but you cannot build. Road, we cannot uh, duplicate the West. You know, we can't duplicate the West building this 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 uh, what we have in America, where uh, three hundred million people got cars or whatnot. You know, you gotta have a good public transportation system. So modern, modern modernity, but modesty. Tokyo was a developed country in the world. Most people travel by train. Most people in Tokyo don't own cars. But there's a lot of cars in Tokyo. But most people are just like, hey, look, you know, I, you know, in Tokyo, the middle class people live in apartments, you know? Apartments the size of my garage, the whole house, whole apartment, less than that. But they're very modest. Sometimes we go to Africa. I want a big mansion on the beach and everything like that, you know, you know. And so we don't want to basically start off with a small house. Fix that up. We want a big mansion, you know, and take people ten years to build and shit, you know. And how's that mansion coming? Like ten years, man. We're gonna die before you move in that shit. But that's it.
Anybody else want to jump on tonight and, and join the conversation? You know, we're always looking for a good conversation, you know? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. So where's everybody at, buddy? Yeah, brother, you ran them off. You ran them off. You ran them off. They're running and they're running and they're running away. They're running away. I want to say, like I said, the Pan African world. What is your opinion? Jump on the line. Tell us what it is. It's like it's like if we were talking about Kyrie Irving and all this kind of stuff. Everybody was calling. Oh yeah, what is this? That's why I said. We have to just take the leadership by the horn, brother. You know, at least tell us what you think. Brother got on a minute ago and gave us his uh, synopsis, you know, of what he's talking about and everything. We need people to come on and, and, and say, what, what what do you think about this movement? You know, are you into this? Are you just playing it by ear? Do you believe in this? Everybody, Everybody's scared. I don't know what to say. You know, just say you don't know and you're learning. Say it. All right, there you go, family. And, you know, I love that flyer. You go, family. The journey of a lifetime continues. We just came back from Tanzania, November, twenty twenty-two, Arusha, Zanzibar Island, Dar es Salaam. Now we we are back from paradise and getting ready to head to the journey of a lifetime to Ghana, then Senegal to Gambia, then back to Ghana, then Rwanda, Tanzania, South Africa, Liberia. The journey continues, family. We have a whole incredible schedule right there on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And then Whole lots of videos and a whole lots of pictures. There you go, there you go, brother. We're almost there in Liberia, so you know we're building up the mm-hmm. energy. Oh yeah, people know we'll be ready. March twenty twenty four. Yeah, I will be there. Man, greetings, brother. I will be there. Yes, man. So keep pushing the energy strong. I will make it work. It will work. You know, like I said, I got a lot of Liberian people on the ground. You no, know, it's like everything. Liberia is a yes country. It's not a maybe. I'll think about it. Also, like this, Liberia is that country that will say yes. They say yes. You know, whenever people say no, Liberia says yes. I got so many people offering me land to build. A city and a town, they're like, oh man, come to town. I, I, I can't even keep up. No. So, so when we, we're going to continue the work of Marcus Garvey. That's what we're doing, folks. All the stuff Garvey dreamed about building communities in Liberia and beyond and everything like that is what we're, what we're doing. We're doing his work. You know, 100 years later, but we're better, better late than never. Hundred years later, we're, we're doing the work of Marcus Garvey. It says, "Thanks, Carla. We have some of these Hebrew wannabe and Muslim Arabs wannabe. They don't want any modernization. They want to talk about little Willie yeah. there. Yeah, it's it's laziness. That's all it is. Laziness. They want to go to Africa, and also what makes it." But bad is they're making it hard for the black people in America because Africans, like Great Africa was telling me, is he says um, he says says something unique. He said when you go to Africa, right, you only got a certain amount of time before you have that American scent on you. You know, 
In other words, basically, people can tell you for America they want uh, what you can build. You're coming from the greatest country in the world. They expect you to have money, education, all stuff like this. When you go over there on some deadbeat shit, that's why I said these guys are not welcome with me in Liberia. You know, when you're on some deadbeat stuff and stupidity, you're not going to be with me. And as unfortunately, there's a lot of people that made their way to Ghana and the countries and they over there messing up and over there doing and not building anything. It's just a sad situation. Yeah, Paul Kagami has a 250 or plan best use of land agriculture. Yeah. Bottom line is this that's what happens when you have real leadership and the village idiots not and run, run things. The people who talk about just living the village life and all that, these are village idiots. These are people who don't want to build anything. They couldn't build anything in America. So they automatically assume. But Africa is on the move. Africa wants to develop and modernize. If anybody tells you that, tells you anything different, it's lying to you. That's why you got so many young African men. Why are they in Morocco right now getting shot? Trying to get into Spain. They want a better life. Now, unless you want to basically take all the smartphones and television, internet, and everything away from the Africans and tell Africa, let's go back to living. That's what they're really talking about. We don't need all this modernization. That means they don't need responsibility. They don't need taxes. They don't need uh, any education. They just live their life for everything. You know, people who think like that, you know, are backwards people. And not just black people. There's some white people who think like that, too. You know, oh, we move from civilization. This is a thing where people think that living in a wilderness is next to nature. Let me tell you something about nature, right? People are like, oh, I want to be a nature. Nature is the most dangerous thing on the friggin' the universe. Nature will take your ass out. You know, these people have not never been camping. They've never been hunting like I have. Everything. When we used to go camping, I was kidding. I couldn't wait to get back to the city and get back. To <laughs> you know, it was like tough. Nature is something else. Now, you can have a balance between the modern world and you go to some outdoor hiking and stuff like this, you know. But the thing is going to live off the grid and uh, no electricity, no running water. And, and you're going to hunt and fish and all stuff like that. You are deluding yourself. That's good for a novelty. Yeah, we want to live off the land. I used to go hunting and and uh, and hiking and and, uh, and camp. I used to camping, so camping and stuff like that, you know. But it's not reality. Now, people who talk like that, man, the people that want to live in a commune, smoke dope all day, and have sex all day, like the Nature Boy. You remember Nature Boy? Yeah, yes, yes, but I remember that. Yeah, uh, they, that they, they stunk so bad, they wouldn't even let them on a plane. They smelled so bad. Oh, you don't, oh, you don't believe in taking showers? Yeah, so it was just because they don't have to, you know, they're like, oh, we live off the nature and everything, you know? All this kind of de degenerate behavior. And they want to bring it to Africa, but yeah, these people, we can't let these people embarrass us, you know? Yeah, we could we we could lose our culture, but what I would like to ask this: when people say our culture, right? Uh, the people who talk about that much about our culture, right? When they go to Africa, they're not practicing it. You know, nobody puts it. Uh, each one teach one. Let's all put our money together. Let's all they don't let everybody's individual. Well, I think there's a lot of black people when they think culture is vanity. It's vanity. Culture is about, you know what culture is? Culture is cultivation. It's your ability to survive. You know, and procreate and pass on, you know, stuff like that. That's a culture. You know, what, 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 how did you guys do it? Oh, we have a culture, you know? This is what tells us what to do, what to not to do, and, and stuff like this. But you can't have a culture, right, if you're not doing something, not producing nothing, you're not accomplishing anything. You know? And people have this idea that go oh, cultures culture always has to be dynamic, it has to evolve, it has to adapt. <coughs> the Chinese had to borrow 
from the Japanese, uh, the, uh, the Japanese had to borrow from the Chinese for hundreds of years. That's where they get their writing from, all the calligraphy, all this, the, everything you see in Japan, right, was borrowed from China. Their martial arts, you know, everything like that came from China. But they made it uniquely their own. When they came up with, with something better, is they have a philosophy. Keep what's good and disregard what's unuseful and make it uniquely your own. The problem is we're in captivity as a race. So therefore, we're not able to keep things, uh, uh, discard things. Everything thrown at us, we have to accept. You know, when they basically tried to make the minstrel shows and everything, we adopted it as our culture, right? Some black people resisted. That's how we act. That's how we talk. But if somebody's putting that in your face all the time, like look at, how we talk about culture. Is our culture basically to uh, accept death and destruction by rappers and everything on the radio and stuff like this? Is that our culture? But we're, we're doing it every day, right? And that's what I mean by well, with culture. Culture is supposed to better you. Hold you. Culture is supposed to teach you right from wrong. Culture teaches you what good and evil is, you know? Culture is about honor and respect and everything. How you how you make it. And your culture can be something that's given to you, something that basically it is. Okay? In other words, basically, my culture is what I is. Why? Because this is what I am. And you can only do that when you are doing all the basic stuffs. Raising a family. Working hard. Providing for yourself. Providing for your family. Working together. You know? That's culture. But if you're not doing all those things, then we don't really have a culture. Now, when you now when, now, when you build, we build these communities, right? There's a new culture is going to take root. Why? Because we're fellowshipping. Without social, it goes like this. You have socialization, you have economics, and then you have po politics. Socialization, we're social creatures as human beings. Kinship. Peers, you know, com uh, uh, camaraderie. You know, all these things are essential in building a thing, uh, building a culture of a people. And then you have traditions, you have folklores that you all share. You have stories, you have shared experiences. That just don't, you can't just give somebody that. Your culture have, have to come through experience. It takes about, I would say, if you have a good people in a community, about 20 years, you have a culture. Because everybody know everybody's on the same page. Everybody in that community will know who did what, what did who, and everything. They'll remember certain events. They'll remember certain things. Oh, remember when such and such came there and everything? If you weren't part of that, you wouldn't know what they're talking about. And you're an outsider. That's how culture is. You can never go to a culture like, let's say, the Akans or wherever like that and just blend right in because you didn't have their experience. What you can do is create a situation where some of, some of the local people and some of us are building together. And over time, especially with the children being born, we'll go to school together and stuff like that, and a new culture will emerge. That's how Europe became a, uh, nations. That's how Japan developed. That's how China developed over thousands of years and everything. Socialization in a marriage and stuff like that. Go ahead, brother. Carla. Yeah. Hey, I've been following you for some time. I always liked your presentation. I first saw hey, you, are, you are, you, are you a member of the BAO? BAO? Greetings, brother. Greetings. Yeah. How are you? Huh? Greetings. How are y'all doing? You on the social network? Yeah, I think I I haven't been on it in a long while. I think I joined it some time ago with Hollops. Was oh, yeah, no, no, no. We're not, we're not together no more. <laughs> oh. 
Yo, download the app uh, on the app store. Yeah, what, what, you got a divorce or something? No. Well, no I got to no. follow up. With, uh, we just had a falling out. You know, I, I wish him all the best, but, you know, I, I we went our separate ways, you know. you know. Well, so is that <laughs> yours right here? Yeah, That's yeah. It? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll hook up with that. Yeah, just download but, the uh, app. Download the app. Oh. Download the app. Uh, it's a, we have an app for it, you know. So you'll be on oh, okay. So what do you want to talk about, brother? Uh, well, I just was uh, appreciate your work. Uh, I've seen you, like I said, I followed you on Dinah Samir and you and a couple other people like Brandon or whatever. But but the most fired up people about the Pan Africanism, it seemed like you stay on point though mm -hmm. and don't get distracted with so much of the worldly bullshit that most black males just constantly stay distracted in. Right. Uh, with this uh, constant media, sports, and whatever trivial things that go on in America, like the elections and what have you. But uh, what is it that you think, because I'm sitting here in Africa now, but what do you think that is going to be needed to get Black people seriously interested in this type of movement and modernization of Africa? Because it just seems like Black people are totally asleep. These Arabs, and I'm over in Tanzania, I'm telling you, these Arabs and these Indians and these whites, they're serious. Yeah, well, I know they're, 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 they're taking businesses. They got businesses. They don't care if it's farming. They don't care if it's whatever it is. They don't care. And uh, uh, it's nothing for you to see blacks out here being just like you see in America. You'll see blacks out there in, in uh, taking care of like crippled white children and all these other kinds. And I'm not, you know, knocking whatever people do for their jobs or their jobs. But you're seeing the same things over here where you see blacks, a lot of blacks poor, these young black girls. They're walking around carrying Arab children. and But what about your own? Your own are poor and don't have nothing. And you're just getting paid nickels. Mm -hmm. These are the things that's going on. And it's like the same type of backstage bull crap that goes on in America goes on right over here underneath the people's nose. Now, we see it because we come mm -hmm. in Black Americans and we, we fire it up. But mm -hmm. you can't be so foolish like I see some Black Americans do. You're going to rouse up the system over here where if you have nothing to replace right. what's going on over here. What the hell are you doing? going to tell this girl, <coughs> quit that job. No, do this. She's got to go home and support herself. Mm -hmm. This exactly. is serious. Our people are in a serious condition. That's why I enjoy watching you, brothers, because you're always talking about something serious, not this nonsense. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm here what? for. I'm, I'm here for anybody that's serious about this movement. I'm dead, deadly serious because I'm saying... That if we lose Africa, we're finished. You know, we're yeah. finished. You know, I don't see really anything else happening. But I think, Kyle, because you have a lot of knowledge about the geopolitics of things that's going on, it's very few people who have, who present that. And I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass or whatever, because yeah. I Thank watch you. people. I didn't went to college and all this shit. But the bottom sign of it is very few, even of our great educators, maybe besides John Henry Cox, who's passed on, many of them don't have a lot of that insight. The Dr. Jeffrey, his older brothers, they do. But mm -hmm. the modern people that's in their 50s, and they don't really have a lot of that insight. They haven't studied like that. Mm -hmm. They got caught up in the showmanship of Dr. Clear Muhammad, maybe. And Clear Muhammad was very knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they got caught up in his showmanship to a certain degree and not a part of his seriousness. Yeah, it's serious. So, uh, awesome. But I think you need to, it'd be, I mean, I'm not putting it all on you because you were just one man. You're doing what you got to do. But you need something like, a, well, you need a, really a platform that, and you got it now, that you can really almost like have classes. And yeah. today we discuss the politics of what's going on in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And you have a class because you know the history. Mm -hmm. You need to, who's the point to have? And so you get interested people who want to learn. They need a professor. Because, mm -hmm. you know, students need a professor. I don't care how old we are. You right. need a professor. So you need someone to direct your education. Mm -hmm. And we can get here and talk about the nonsense of Negroes not doing this and not doing that. Niggas are going to be do what they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is you got the kind of knowledge that's more than just like the, the cracking on dumb people or attacking the, the, the stupidity that you may have seen in, in the BIO and other things of, of the past. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. need something where you can actually sit there. Okay, when did this happen in Zimbabwe? Why did that leader come out? Why is they, 
they're suffering economically right now. What are the corporations that you've seen to present that type of political, geopolitical information? Right. You see what I'm saying? So if you just had maybe added to your platform already, and you may already have it, but these are days that we're going to discuss Make it a whole classroom thing from nine to five. This is what we're going to be stuck in on this day about. And it's like a classroom thing. You got assignments to do. You got things to come in here. You can't just come in here and sit up. Exactly. And, and I'm just joking around and talking about what happened with Kyrie. Fuck up. You know, what, what, you know. Yeah. And what is what is our plan to change any of this? Do we have any plans? You got, That's what you, you got. to. One thing about schools is that you're supposed to be able to challenge the students to come up with plans, mm -hmm. not with just rhetoric. Because that's not getting black people anywhere. No. We're full of rhetoric, you know. And you're in that position right now where you could really be out there as a teacher. Because I watch it because you know you say things that's about past and current events. Well, I didn't know that, you know. And I mean, this this who else is saying those things, you know? I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a problem, bro. That's a problem, right? And and like I said, a lot of our people, right, like being entertained, right? And when you start talking about stuff like I, I, when I came on the scene, I was I was here before Tariq Omar Alden. You know, I have a block talk radio show and a BAL, created BAO and stuff like that. And uh, and what I learned over the years is that a lot of black people, you know, they they follow, they want to be little college answers, right? They want to talk about Pan African. Blah, 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 blah. It seems good and sexy, right? But and and a lot of them say, oh, I'm just going to Africa. I don't have to listen to you, whatever like that. But like you said, you're sitting there in Tanzania, right? And you're saying, right. this, some people think they, they think they should get their passport, get their visa, and I'm home free. What's on my African soil? I'm like this. And I'm saying to myself, <laughs> uh, I, I'm saying to myself, I said, look, you understand, right? That uh, there's a lot of stuff that went on on the continent, particularly East Africa, right? Where you mm. you had slavery, you had uh, the Islamization, and exactly. all this stuff like that, and stuff and stuff like that. So uh, they don't have the same uh, thought process as we do. Okay, all right. It's like I saw a video uh, uh, where a, a video I saw I saw Bamani about it Saturday, where this um, in the Ivory Coast. This was an, it was an African group, right? An African group. Listen to this. There was a white boy that was a baby, right? He was a baby, and this African lady was carrying him on his back, whatever, like that. Ivory Coast. <coughs> this guy came back, <coughs> excuse me, twenty five years later, and found her. That's not one thing. Okay, beautiful story. You know, he said, "Yeah, he carried me on my back and whatnot." And they showed a picture of him grown, and he was a baby, wherever. But all the Africans in this group was like, "Yes, that's so beautiful. The world coming together and stuff right. like that." <laughs> and I'm saying, do you understand the implications, you know, of of uh, 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 of of this? Now, at the same time, right? I see more division among Black people from the, the diaspora. I see East Africa versus West Africa and stuff like this. But that one white person, right, uh, being carried around, like, oh my God, that's like this. Right. This is the mentality. Now we always beat up on Black America because we're in America and everything, but it's like we're more conscious than they are. You're on your own continent, right? You're the majority, but the thing is, Africans have never been taught race consciousness, you know? Exactly. Race. And the bottom line is this, and it's because we've been always taught that we got to eliminate racism. We got to eliminate racism. Well, if racism is, uh, uh, if white people are still racist, Chinese are racist, everybody's racist, right? It's a survival thing. It's a power thing, right? Mm. The black man, right, it, it has been taught that the world will get better if the world stopped looking at his color, look at his race, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what we're taught. We're taught in America, and we're taught that in Africa. I don't believe in color. I don't believe in race and all that stuff like that. But the thing is, though, the world, the people who make the decisions about who lives, who dies, who eats and everything are white. Okay? Exactly. The G7 and all that stuff like that, there's no African countries over there in that, you know? There's no African making decisions, right? They're basically yeah. trying to, uh, they could tell African countries what to do, what to grow, what to uh, import. Africa has no power over uh, its, its borders or what they export, its currency and everything like that. You have a whole entire continent, right? That the currencies, most countries in Africa, you can't even trade them in. Like Ghana right now, you can't trade the Ghana CD 
crazy because it's worthless, $20 to uh, $20 a one, right? There's no plan to bring uh, uh, African monetary system together, which we could pull all, we could pay off, the, pay the debts, external debts to African countries, right? African Americans could do that, could help do that because we sit on, we, this is the power we have. We sit, we control cities like Chicago, Detroit, and New York, and stuff like that. These countries, these cities have billions and billions of dollars in, 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 in pension funds and sovereign wealth, right? The yeah. pension funds and sovereign wealth go to countries like England, France, and everything to help them out with the infrastructure and everything. How, when's the last time you've seen a, 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 a black city mayor say, you know, we're going to put our, uh, our sovereign wealth fund in a, 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 a project in Ethiopia or a project in Kenya? It's never happened. Because we don't Never. think on it. You see what I mean? Yeah. If we basically say, if we said, you know something? Uh, Joe Biden gave $80 billion to Ukraine, which we got to pay back. $80 billion, which they say <laughs> it was all looted. And mm. I, had, I, I was arguing with this Liberian brother of mine, senior brother of mine. I respect him and everything. I said, why are you going so hard for Joe Biden? Yeah, how much, how much money is he giving Liberia? Nothing. But yeah, he got $80 billion to give a racist Nazi country like Ukraine. But you're taking the money, exactly. and they're not even fighting a the war. They're taking the money and stashing it. But nothing comes to Africa. But yet, every, but when it comes to uh, Africa, we they uh, we're voting for the United States. We're uh, 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 doing all stuff. But I did like the fact that Africa stood up when Russia. Remember when Russia, Africa stayed a non-aligned. They stayed out of the Russian invasion. You know exactly. Yeah. And I uh, that's progress right there. So what we do is say, hey, look. That's what we support. We support we, Africans saying, you know something, we're going to stay out of this, right? Uh, the the, the uh, one guy of the congressman, I think his name is Meek, said, oh, Af any, it, it, basically threatening people like you and I. Anybody that's dealing with an African country that's in, that's, that's claiming Russia is going to be arrested, whatever, like basically trying to threaten the black people in America who are pan Africanists, right? And we start speaking up and saying, mm -hmm. you know, why, why, why should we uh, care about what Russia and Ukraine? That's not us. All we're saying is we don't support the war in U or Ukraine. We say that's not our issue. After, exactly. After them not giving any money, no, nothing like that, Africa's poor. Africa has people dying, uh, leaving and whatnot. No nothing, no anything. You want us to side with you anyway. Exactly. You know? And so these are the conversations I want to see happen. It's not enough... To freaking say, I got a plot of land in Zambia. Or I got a plot of land in Namibia, and you on YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in Africa, and whatnot. <laughs> you know, this is real business. Right. Where do you stand on these issues? You know, and a lot of times, people and black people that go to the continent, they don't have any political. Uh, 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 they don't have any political uh, views. I just all I know is I'm, and also I expect women to be like that, right? I know what you noticed, it, right? Mm -hmm. I right. but, then I did, but I did like that girl Tiffany Banner. Remember, she was in Tanzania. That girl mm -hmm. Tiffany. When you yeah, when she, you was she was she telling was the truth. She was telling the right? truth. She was a nineteen-year-old girl, and she was saying what grown men should have been saying. Exactly. You know, everybody. Else, she's too. That's radical. why she, they was offended by her. They just yeah. didn't want to admit it. They was offended by her because she made the men look weak. She made the men look which weak. they are. The yeah. men are weak. And this is what I'm talking about with the so-called Pan-Africans, right? It's like, yo, look, you're a Pan-African. You're a soldier. You're a man. You know, this is our position, right? If you don't like it, why not take my passport, take my visa, and send me back to the United States. But this is our position. We don't like what we see right here. You know, this is what we'll see, see right here. This is not acceptable. It's not acceptable seeing grown-ass, in Mavasa and places like that, grown-ass white men with young African girls, you know? And this is what we're talking about when we talk about the African American and stuff like this. You know, this is our position on uh, this is our unified position on the uh, pipeline from Uganda to a uh, thing. Let Uganda, they're intelligent enough to make their own decisions. You know, right? they want to build that pipeline and they say it's going to build an industrialized area. Let them do it. You know, we basically have no position or anything in the, the, the docility that we have in America. We're bringing it to the African continent. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is what yeah. I'm saying. I think that like someone like yourself who has a lot of knowledge. If, if I mean, I can't tell you what to do. You know, you're a grown man. Yo, 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 yo. Tell me, yo, tell I'm, me. I'm, I'm just simply saying that you, you have the, 
you have it. You know, I'm, I can see over someone who, who knows what they're talking about and someone mm -hmm. who's full of shit. Right. You would have what it takes. And I'd say, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass because if I saw you was fucking around, I'd say this guy's full of shit. But right. I'm simply saying you have what it takes to teach this geopolitical type thing that's necessary. And right. see, a lot of these people here are just fooling around. I mean, you just, uh, if you're not coming here to look for the future when we're dead and gone, what the hell is the purpose of this thing? Right. Uh, we're just bullshitting. You right. know, we're, this is, pull it, call it what it is, you're in the middle of an effing race war. Now, that's yeah. what we're in, whether we want to accept that or not. Yeah. Okay? This has been laid upon you. It's your duty to get yourself out of it. You can mm -hmm. sit here and talk about racism. It's going to stop. That's not reality for them to stop kicking your behind. It's for you to stop letting your behind get kicked. So right. what I'm saying is you have the ability to teach this. So you need to set up someone like a classroom type thing where you can get the more type of oh, studio well. type people who are interested in bringing this kind of uh, that type of information. Because you got people who are coming to these places, whether it's to here, to, and they like to run in East Africa. I noticed this. They'll run from West Africa. But they love to run to East Africa when they want to get off into this cultish type. I want to live off of the earth. I'm some type of Hebrew or native, this type of nonsense. Right. We lost. Hey, Chris, I think you're frozen. <clears throat> uh, Chris. Chris. All right, um, I'm not sure what happened with him. All right, now uh, let me see if I can just um, drop. And let him come back in. Let put put the link back in. So I will come back in. But yeah, and I'm gonna start wrapping it up, uh, brother Kala. If you have a few yeah. more things you want to share, well, I'm glad I did, this brother really gave me some real uh, uh, boost, man. Because I like I'm feeling depressed. That you know that I'm all alone in this. You know, I, I'm, 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 I'm grateful for his brother's words tonight. You know, I'm really grateful for Chris's words tonight. You know, and, and, and the thing is, if if we're gonna go over to Africa and see the same nonsense that we see in America, and not say nothing, what the what, what the hell's the point? You know, what the hell's the point? We want to build these citadels of of, of, of peace and Pan Africans on the African continent and be the example. They should, we should show the people. That's how we're going to teach Africans. But they, a lot of times they don't know uh, uh, how they're viewed to the outside world. You know, you're more than that. And you're in your own continent, your own country, right? You should not be a second-class citizen in your own country. You should jo enjoy the fruits of your, your land. If you can't enjoy the fruits of your land, you don't have a country then. If everybody is basically making money but you uh, 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 money uh, and prospering in your land, like you said, like you said, these people aren't playing. They're basically going to have it so that they're going to have millions of them on the continent, and Africans are going to be just spectators on the on their own continent, and we're going to be outsiders on the continent. You know, that's where they're going. They're not right. they're super broke. You know, and I'm saying what I said, it's not enough just to go to Africa and just sit back and I'm chilling and whatnot in Africa and whatnot. No, this is a this is a war. This is a race war. It's a global race war, you know. Right. We need all hands on deck. We need people like this, and so, so therefore, we have to be conscious of that, man. Because it's not just enough just to say I'm a pan African, I'm going to Africa or whatever like that. But this is a war, you know. And and the bottom line is, I'm seeing stuff. I'm seeing is the fact that uh, 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 the United States, right, made United States would not be here if it wasn't for the blood of the Africans who built this country, the trade, everything like that, right? Yeah, America, right. Africa had to die so America could be born, right? But this same America, right, will give billions of dollars to the state of Israel, billions of dollars to this country, right? But there's not one African country of America says this is our, our good friend, even though it calls Africa their friends and everything, but America has never gave an African uh, a really solid hand up and everything. It's never going to happen. It's never gonna we're happen. in the middle of a race war. Right. And so and we'll, that's yeah. when I hear yeah. black people talking, these building these things in America, 
I don't hate America. You know, that's, it's where we're from. But it's almost irrational for you to be talking this kind of building this stuff there. I mean, you should almost treat this place like, now I'll tell you the one thing that Holliston said that was correct. You should be treating that place almost like the immigrants. I work, I make my money and put it over. Yeah, that's what, that's one thing we agreed about with him and I agreed on. I agreed on a lot of stuff he said. What could the you be really is, doing there? I'm not I'm saying hate it. If you could build something in America, do it. But it's you're never going to control the infrastructure there. That's already done. It's the it, it's the it, America is not our end game. You know, exactly. if, we, if we became like immigrant, we're like the immigrant, where America is just a place we make money, right? And sit like a let me give you an example. Mexicans send over sixty billion dollars back to Mexico every year, right? Black America, African Americans generate one point eight trillion. But guess what? All that money goes back into the white man system, right? If we had an outlet, Matt, let me ask you a question. When are we going to create the first African American, African diaspora bank on the African continent? A bank, just a place you put money in the banks, invest in stuff like this. You know? We don't even have a fucking bank. It only takes a million dollars right. to start a bank. We so so therefore. If we had our own banking services, we had some guy, this guy, Michael Jackson, he called me not too long ago. He was with Dynas a couple of years ago, whatever, like that, with Luke Major. And with that, he was with this thing where these Swedish people wanted to form a, uh, have an a electronic bank, whatever. I don't know, it fell through with that Luke Major shit, shit. But anyway, bottom line is this. I said, that's a good idea. Why? Because uh, uh, we would have, uh, uh, if we have banks on the content, right? And we come to the continent, right? We put we have a, a banking, uh, we put our money in the bank. You talk about millions and millions and billions of dollars influx into the economy, you know? And if, and with the private sector, we that, that banks could loan the government money, the local municipality money, and everything like that, and uh, develop real estate, develop industrial and everything. That's what I'm talking about. We have the means to do that. The, we sit on pension funds worth billions of dollars in America, you know? We sit on pension funds, you know? Pension funds is how uh, city employee pension funds is how Las Vegas was built. You know, pension fund yeah. loans. You know, uh, Bob Johnson did uh, tapped into Baltimore's and built some casinos in the in the Caribbean. You know, a couple of years ago, but that's what that's how they do it. Sony Music, right? How they how they get their money to capital? New York State uh, Education Pension Fund. You know, billions and billions of dollars. We sit on these pension fund boards and everything, but there's the whole thing is there's not pan Africans. Now, people uh, back in the days, uh, how, how old you are, do you remember back in the days we had the divest movement from South Africa in the 80s? Yeah, right. <clears throat> what that was was like black colleges and black people who have cities, still cities, said we're going to divest from South Africa. That means the South African RAM was the most powerful currency in the world, you know? And right. when pension funds put in there, we invest in the RAM and everything for South Africa's infrastructure, you know? We said we're going to pull right. off out of South Africa, that's called the divestment movement because American inflation was so high and everything. The rand was equal to the dollar at the time. So South Africa was a good place to put your pension, your uh, uh, annuities, 401k, and stuff like that. South Africa was a place. The black, uh, we basically had a divest movement where we got out of colleges, we got divest and everything because everybody, all the institutions in America were putting their money in South Africa, you know, at the time. So instead of saying, you know something, that was pretty good. We learned how to divest. We got the money out of South Africa. We crippled the economy and everything. But now, okay, if we could take the money out, why don't we have a coordinated effort to, to invest in these other African countries? You know? Well, this see, this is the reason why I'm... Yes, 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 color. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, uh, it's, it's, it's all good, brother. It's all good, brother. Appreciate you coming on, brother. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 gonna do this, we're gonna do this again Saturday night. We're gonna do this again Saturday night. 
We're gonna do so. We're gonna Saturday night. Join us Saturday night, man. We're gonna continue this, man. Join us. Uh, join. Yeah, absolutely. Saturday. We're gonna do this again Saturday night. So yes, Carla. Great, uh, great night, man. And yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, have your productive week and everything, and you know, oh, yeah. very productive week and everything, and keep the energy going. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and, we got and, and family. That's our schedule right there. Join us on the wonderful journeys of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it starts now. Connect, plan, organize, connect with me. Okay. And yes, yes. Yes, Kala. Yes, brother, man. It's yeah, awesome. man. I got more, bro. I'm just getting started, bro. Wait till Saturday night, bro. You know? There you go. Let's I get got more. You know? These are the stuff, like the brother was saying, we should be talking about. You know? The stuff we should be talking about, you know? I mean, it's just it's just a shame, you know? Uh, we're not talking on this sort of level, you know? We, our, our educated black people and stuff like that, you know? We got... We, you know, it just it's just sad, you know. That's what the Pan-African movement has to be. It has to be about nation building and building infrastructure, you know. And the bottom line is this, we're never going to change America. You know, people, oh, America. You know, and another thing I'm tired of, right, this reparations thing. Reparations is just a freaking distraction from nation building. You know, they're never going to hand you no money. They just want to get you voting <laughs> and get you out there like fools, you know. <laughs> To, to the polls and everything and distract it, you know? And that's why we keep saying the only hope is us building Africa and competing in Africa. It's a shame we have to start, we have to even, we're not even there yet, but competing with other races for our mother continent. You know? That's an that's a absolute shame and disgrace. You know, that we got Arabs and everybody else coming over there and <coughs> employing the people and stuff like that, you know? But they're backed by their governments. But like I said, we have we control cities in America. Some of our cities in America got more money than some of these countries that are investing in Africa. We got to start using that, you know, and steering our, our people to the for the African continent. And people say, "Oh, don't tell me that." America basically invests all over the world. Sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. But with a black man, we only want to. They only want to give us a chance. You know, we should have billions of dollars flowing into Ghana and and uh, uh, and and Liberia. We're gonna do it too, you know, and we gotta start doing that and saying, "Look, look, if you don't want to help us, or like this, if Pan Africanism and nation building became black, burning in the hearts of Black America, we'd be free tomorrow." But it's not. What's in the hearts of Black America is foolishness, nonsense, and entertainment. You know, that's why I'm tired of it. You know, I've studied history, world history way too long, you know, and like I said, they have us in America, right, where they don't know what to do with us, but they, they so they do is they keep us uh, 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 well, discombobulated, you know, all the stuff you see, the propaganda, all the stuff you see is to keep us uh, 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 looking, uh, looking, searching and, and, uh, and, and, and in a constant state of turmoil and chaos. That's what they're doing. You know, and also we look around like a whole week went past, right? Damn, I ain't seen no discussions on Pan-Africanism. But I know more about Kanye West than I ever did, you know? You know, I'm like this, you know? I know more about this uh, this uh, 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 back and forth between the passport bros and the black women. You know, I had this, this skit. I'm gonna, we will end in a minute, right? But I, I thought about this skit, right? You know, think of tell me what you think. I'll tell them on radio show the other night, right? Where you got uh, 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 Big Shirley, right? She's in front of Congress, right? And she's there with a with a with a chicken leg to eat. I'm tired of the passport, bro. We gotta ban this. I'm coming for Congress to tell you, you know what I'm saying? I haven't got my nails done in a week. I got this, why not? You got these passport bros giving all these women overseas <coughs> money that we we have. We made these niggas, you know? <laughs> and Big Shirley's is uh, before the Congressional Committee on Passport Bros. You know, that's something I want to make up one time, you know, a skit, whatever. But anyway, Brother Mike, it's been good, man. I'll, I'm going to holler at you. We'll holler at you tomorrow. All right, you take care, brother. Take care, family. 
Yeah, uh, Chris, uh, Brazen, call back in your Saturday night, man. We're going to be here Saturday night, brother. You know, it's how we do. This is the only place where you're going to see real Pan-Africanism and talk. I like the tropical background you got there, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so cool, man. You feel like you're in paradise? Yeah, man. I'm like, God damn, man. I'm feeling good. I'm about man. to rest like I'm in paradise. Yeah, it's like it's feeling good, man. But I mean, the journey can where, continue. This is where we're pan, real pan African. We're talking about the, co- the, the kings African. of pan Africanism family. This is this is the sort of conversation I used to have back. In, I used to see back in the days when we had uh, uh, real pan Africans get on shows like Like It Is, and they were talking about what's going on in this country. This country it wasn't all this stupid nonsense and everything like that. You know, we we're gonna start talking about real pan Africanism. This movement is not dead. You know. You know, this movement is world live it, it, it ever was, you know. So anyway, brother Money, uh have a you have a good night, man. And everybody out there, thank you. Man. We got a lot of people, had a lot of people in the chat room tonight, man. So All right, enjoy positive time, Diego family.